Uh, type something and say hi. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, we're definitely on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, good morning. <laughs> oh my welcome, God. welcome to the Richard and Judy show. Oh, hey. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise known as Beauty and the Beast. So. I love it. Richard and Judy show. Oh, good morning, everyone. It's lovely to be here. And I'm really glad you've taken the time out um, to see us, guys. So um, we are doing the prepared stylist. It is the professional stylist today. Um, we've got quite a few things to cover and we hope that you guys will be really interactive, ask us lots of questions and get as much um, information as you can from the pair of us. Of course, naturally, I represent Census um, on our lovely duo this morning and Rich. I will be jumping in on all and sundry, <laughs> never do see a little bit of euphora, anything that we supply. I'm yeah. here to um, divulge info on. Absolutely. Um, our main concern today, um, Rich and I have been talking about it the last couple of days, is really that we want you to know um, everything at Passion, what we've got here to support you. Not with, um, by the absolute brilliance of uh, Debbie over the, this last week, we've all been watching and following and going, oh! um, but also just what goes on behind the scenes with our products and how they can really help support us getting back into work. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the other thing is not only is it the products, it's also the networking, keeping in touch with everybody, making sure that we're, you know that we guys are here for you in, in whatever other way we can help. Um, absolutely. So, so let's, um, uh, let's look yeah. at what we've got, boss. <laughs> so one of the things we just want to um, work together today, probably to overcome most of our worries. I know a few of us are feeling a little bit insecure about um, heading back to what we do. Uh, good morning, everyone. I can see you guys still coming in. Um, and remind ourselves that we do know our staff and um, we've got to keep up with our ever-growing professionalism. It's one of the things being part of... Um, an independent company that we really, really have talked about consistently. I know I have with Debbie and Daniel and the guys probably for the last, you know, seven years about how we need to keep raising our um, standards of hairdressing and what we need to do. And this is um, sort of really what's been going on is the tip of the iceberg, as Debbie likes to say, um, and that we really want to focus on all of the other things to get you up to date and make sure that we're on sort of the same path um, or on the same alignment at Passion here and with our products. Yeah. The, the, one of the things I've noticed on being stupid enough to continue with the Facebook groups, particularly <laughs> the, the famous one, is how many people are moaning that they can't get in touch with their reps or get in touch with their product companies. Like, we're completely the opposite. We're completely able to touch base with Debbie and Daniel and Passion for Hair as, a, as an organisation, as a network, as a supplier instantly. Yeah. Um, they're all absolutely going hysteria like out there because they can't get in touch with it. And um, I have to say, my good friend Andy has made me laugh that someone sort of said, um, who knows the um, protocol for Weller? And Andy just put up Weller. <laughs> you know, get in touch with your colour house and um, here we are. Get so, in touch with you And my favourite saying is failure to prepare is preparing to fail. And this is one of those webinars that's going to help you to prepare. Does that so, mean I can say that? Adulting is hard. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. So um, just to remind you guys, um, just on the side here, if you've got any questions... Um, just pop them in the question box because at the end we will go over. What Rich and I were discussing earlier is we will sort of say to you, okay, at each section, um, have you got any questions about this? Because what we wanted to do is um, talk about some products and things and then ask questions there. So um, <laughs> I don't think he is off his ban yet, Georgia. Maybe I so. am. I am. I'm <laughs> back. <laughs> I'm back. Is, I, I actually back. complained. I did complain because I thought that my link to Debbie's chat with Sophia Hilton was to help people. And obviously yeah, it relevant. did. 
You, Debbie, tell me how many people have viewed that video. I can't believe it. I think it's like 12,000 times it's been viewed. So yes. my link was valid. So. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. All right. So um, just to remind you how to get about um, passion um, and where everything is, of course, uh, Rich and I were saying this morning, we've got so much information on the passion the hairstylist hotline. Um, whilst I'm here, I actually wanted to say thanks for you guys that really um, interact on that because sometimes I don't get there first and then I see all the brilliant answers that are coming up and I think it's fantastic. So keep sharing your information on that hotline because I know it really, really helps support us all um, and I love the fact that we keep sharing. Um, the other thing for me, of course, is the census app. I am a big advocate of this app. I think it's absolutely brilliant. It, I say don't be shy and um, start trying it. It really helps us to formulate um, colours and what we want to do. And it also helps those clients that are a little bit pushy, a little bit bossy to say, this is what I want. And it can actually say, no, you can't achieve that result. So it really helps clients understand what's going on. Um, don't be shy about using it because I love it, especially with the if you guys haven't used the point one twos yet and um, you've missed out on my um, uh, conference about that. You will pick it up on the Passion for Hair. Um, How dare they? How dare they? But the Passion for Hair YouTube channel is awesome. Um, I was having a little wander around it the other day, just having a look at some of the things that I have missed or I wanted to go back on. Um, and, and re-listen to it. So it's fantastic. Don't forget to have a look there too. The other thing with the census app is however confident, however amazing that your, your colour theory is, in the moment there is that, that innate thing to go back to the peroxides that you use and you'll be amazed how many times this app tells you to use 40 vol when you think 30 or 30 when it's, you, you know, you think 20 is the right one. Um, yeah. It's just your fail safe to give you the right formulas. And also, um, that's actually brilliant what you just said there, Rich, because pe we do naturally go to our old habits um, of what we... <laughs> He's got the coffee this morning. And we do naturally go back to our old habits. Um, and that information isn't the same anymore, especially if you're sort of um, an older stylist. Uh, we're particularly taught, uh, yeah, particularly taught in one way, and these things have changed, and the products are getting better, and they are, we are doing different things now to what we used to do maybe 20 years ago. So, I think it's really important to continue with the app when you're a little like, oh, <laughs> yeah, mature, not old. Okay, I'll go with that. <laughs> I'll go experienced. With that. Yeah, experienced. But um, we do, when we're in that rush or in that sort of moment of, you know, when we go back, we might be quite getting ourselves busy and at it. And then we sort of question ourselves a little bit more. This app really helps to support that and it stops um, you second guessing yourself, really. It stops that little voice too going, no, you shouldn't be doing that. And you saying, yeah, 40 <laughs> volt, are you mad? Are you mad? <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Um, also, Rich, the other sites to have a look on um, are? We have um, Malibu C, uh UK on Facebook. We have, obviously, ilovecensus.com. Fantastic for all the technical sheets if you want to download those as well. Um, we have, um, blimey, we have, obviously, the Passion for Hair helpline, which, again, just... The amount of people, it's its that feeling of network with that one. I just love watching and listening and, and seeing what comes up on that one. I just love that one. Obviously, PH for Pro um, with all the all of the sheets. Screenshot them on your cell and iPads. Wonderful way of keeping in touch with all your information close to hand. Um, I can't, what is the last one? I think that's it. You sure? Yeah. Yeah, I think right. so. I'm going to go with your wisdom. <laughs> Definitely. All right, so um, just having a little look at today's topics and what we wanted to um, chat with you guys about, and we thought that this would be really helpful for when we go back into the salon. 
We're going to look at obviously our consultation and tests and how we see this working. We don't just mean skin tests, we're going to go over all of our tests because there's been lots of changes and skin testing has just sort of um, tipped to the top but actually there's some really important things that we perhaps don't do enough of or we're not keeping enough um, notes on or we might be overthinking and not sure where that sits in with our um, sort of um, our commercial decision if you like. Um, we want to explain why we test, um, our facts about uh, testing in the salon, a little space for these, what we can do if we have negative tests, how our products can support those negative tests and be able to start turning them around so we actually can carry on with our job. So even if something comes back to us and we think, oh, we're unsure about that, we've got some really great solutions that will get you started and on that colour journey for your client. We wanted to talk about some key problems, um, small roots, large roots, reverse colouring, um, how MC2 fast colour might fit in with all that, um, solving colour problems, some white hair, uh, how we might tone. Um, we'd like to say I've put in their lifetime issues and it's kind of a little bit of a weird, sick joke of mine because actually some of my clients, are, I think, wow, I don't know if you can ever solve their um, colour problems, but we can ever change their look and keep them uh, buzzing for that time, can't we? Yeah, and I also think it's um, it's all about realistic expectations as well, being honest with your client and making sure that actually some of the things that they want you to do, particularly on day one when they arrive, are not going to be realistic. So like, we'll try and get into how we might deal with a client that comes in and, and has an unrealistic expectation of what you're going to be able to do. So yeah. that's something else we, know, we try to look into today. Yeah, absolutely. Um, one of the things that we were talking about, um, and I remember from our last lockdown, I did something similar about um, different solutions on that first part. And I know in since this lockdown and a few changes of um, uh, technical decisions in our industry, um, how are we going to fit that into our price packaging? Because I know I think pricing is a really big issue sometimes. Um, and I've decided how I'm going to fit that into my salon is have a corrective add-on pack package. So, for example, it's one of the things, the first things I wanted to talk about this morning is just so that you get thinking about what would be in that package. So, for example, when we need to do small things and tone round. So, let's say we're doing a forehead of highlights and then we need to be able to balance those highlights out because we've got dark roots ends and we can't pack in as many highlights. We're never going to get the roots to look as light as the ends. What do we do in between? So I would be saying, let's put in a full head of highlights. Then we might have to work back through our packets and just feed in a few darker pieces for the last few, you know, 20 minutes. And we might want to revitalize that blonde hair that's through the rest of the hair. So already we've got maybe three other things that we're using on the hair that's on the outside. Or maybe we might be using a fard, say, to tone the hair that's outside of the packets. And then we might have to do another toner inside once we've taken all the packets off. So, of course, we've got a full head of highlights and a toner there. That's normal and standard procedure with our cut and blow dry, right? So I wanted to, us to maybe think about creating an add-on package and inside those packages may be for the time of now. Yes, we can do a full head of highlights, but we may need to do an add-on package where we have to rectify some of the highlights that, that aren't picked up. Maybe we need to put a little crystal gel on those ends. And maybe you could have a package, an add-on package that's like, I don't know, 40 or 45 pounds that increases your full head of highlights. And it gives you an opportunity to maybe use in a little quick fix where you need it, a little toning in between the packets where you need it, maybe a little treatment in between the packets where you need little bits and pieces. But they're your decisions as a stylist because I might use half a little quick fix sachet just around where I need it because the client has been crazy with the blue shampoo over the last 
um, few months. So I might want to use a little bit of that. I might want to use a little bit of sand and gold, but it's a tiny amount. So that already has given me three products. Then probably I'm actually going to do a little treatment in between the packets, which would be different from doing an all over treatment after the color because you charge for that. But now I've got three products. How do I charge for those three tiny little things? It's really difficult. And as a salon owner, I know that they need to be paid for because a little dollop of this there or a little sprinkling of that there eventually adds up on all the clients. Are you guys with me? Yeah, it's also it's really, really easy for us as experienced stylists to be able to do that and say to the client, we're going to need to do this and it's going to cost this amount of money extra. But rather than wheeling up with a big list of all the things that we've got to do, that little care package or that, that extra promotion package is a really, really nice way of, of delivering that horrible information to the client that they're going to have to pay a little bit more because of what's happened to their hair and the environment that's happened and what we've got to do to try and resolve that. Um, yeah, because so I think it's a fantastic thing. I think we um, charge for a restyle, don't we? So most people, what we're going to be doing when they come back in, we won't be charging for a cut and blow dryer. We're actually going to be charging for a restyle. So we're going to be increasing on that. Well, how do we restyle full head of highlights? We know they need to, a full head of highlights, but actually it's a restyle of a full head of highlights. It's all your add-ons. They're used to our little add-ons of toners and things or treatments that we recommend but sometimes it might just be a case of i just want to put some conditioner um through those ends and kind of you need a little care package like a little add-on corrective care package if you like yeah. that you can just throw in so if you're doing a balayage you charge for the balayage and you charge for the toner but there might be a couple of extra things in there that you use and that will be under that little um, care package that little restyling of color if you like what we would naturally do and not even think twice to do for haircuts yeah absolutely and again let's let's like prepare so we do this in our consultation don't do it at the end and then trying to deliver what how much you've got to charge that client and as carol was said there welcome yeah. carol carol's a new a new to our family welcome Yay. Carol. um <laughs> It's about the timings and again, like preparing is making sure your consultations are, are done well in advance to try and mitigate any, you know, irregularities yeah, I mean, with all your timings. Yeah. There will always be, like Carol's put there, last minute extras that are an issue. And they are. And a way to get around that last minute issue is to say that's absolutely no problem. Um, I can do all those things, but there is a um, corrective care charge on top of that so it will be your highlights for that and then this as well so and then inside that it doesn't matter if you use a few different little things that you need to get um that particular service at its full potential anyway we'll talk about it lots i'm sure over um as we're working and saying that can go in the care package because we can add that in there so it's really you know, it was just something that we'd been talking about and thinking, how can we solve that problem of last minute extras, of upgrading that that highlights? They need extra. We are going to need to do extra highlights. Yeah. So, um, um, just to answer Jill's question, like guys, help help Jill out here. Like, get typing and give everybody some ideas on what may come into that package. Jude has mentioned a few. Applying yeah. fard, darker packets in between the mesh, treatment to go in there, a little crystal gel or something to go inside in between the packets to lighten perhaps, I don't know, silver shampoo that's gone gone a bit mad in, in, during lockdown. So let's get a nice long list in the comments section about all the things you might think that would come into this corrective care package. Let's get Let's help each other out here as well. So as well, we're going to talk about um, how to remove some banding because I know that's going to be a really huge problem for us. Um, a method how to work more precisely and directly. So again, what we were talking about was reverse colouring, some things like this. We want to address these services and get that cleared for you. 
Um, and then, of course, we've got our um, bigger solutions um, that actually are my total lifeline, um, colour removals and direct colour remover. So, and um, of course, my little baby, lightning oil, that's going to be thrown in today as well. Because, you know, I love it. It wouldn't be a presentation today. without your lightning oil. I know. God forbid. I've actually put a ban on them forever ever discontinuing it because I said you can't I absolutely love this product it's my baby right. we'll hold it <laughs> otherwise absolutely <laughs> okay so um our next part that we're going to cover is um let's go over the tests why when and how and what we can do if we get a negative response to a test this is the most important part I think Absolutely. Okay, so first of all, um, I'm going to take my sort of passion for hair hat off. I'm not going to take my hat off literally because I'm too cold, hence the gloves. But let's think about getting our ducks in the row. So can I have the next like oh like and again, dare we say colour start or not colour start? So what I'd like to do is do some yes, straight talking and some straight thinking. On the Facebook groups, particularly, everyone seems to be remarkably hysterical about what's going on and i think it's because they all feel out of control all of these new protocols are being put upon them rather than us deciding to do this new these like set up these new protocols now obviously it's all insurance based um and the the, the litigation that it seems to be going up so how about we look at this as a decision that we choose to make rather than the insurance company enforcing us to do these things? Let's take, for example, if we were to do hair extension services that we've never done before. What would we need to think about if we were going to introduce a new service? And this new service will be skin testing. It will be log in the results. So what we would do, we would get qualified correctly. We already know we're that, so we can do that, but we need to make sure that we fulfill our insurance and our manufacturer's instructions obligations. We would do our due diligence. We would cost it. We would you check on our insurance to make sure that we are doing everything that is according to our insurance, so therefore we are covered proficiently. We get our systems in place. Now, we would use the product companies we are supplied by. That's us. We need to make sure that our systems are in place before we open on the door. That will mitigate any hysteria. It will make sure that we are back in control of this thing. We would then contact all of our clients that we know want what we are offering. So I'm sure everyone can off the top of the head knows exactly all of the clients that will definitely use Color Start, for example. We would then market this new service with confidence that it enhances our reputation as the town's best salon. We are. Every single member is the, the town's best salon. Sorry, Jude. I'm just going to add in there about what, what we were just saying there. Can you see the reference when we said we would contact the clients and let, we, let, let them know what we're offering? And this part is really important because... When I look at Colour Start, for me, how I see that in relevance with something that I've put in the salon in place, like extensions or a new service, it's just part of our new service. And um, I can already think of the clients that I know that will need Colour Start. Those clients that I know that are constantly changing their looks and their images, they're going to love that as they would an extension situation so for me i would be talking to them as it's not another option we need this we need you to be able to yeah, do that so we can yeah. allow all those changes all the time so i um i love what we were saying the other day first we're chilled then it's hysterical and then we're chilled again i think try to stay on that balance of i know those clients that i need to have that so i'm going to focus my drive on the difficult ones or the ones that I know like lots of changes and they want those changes. So that for me would be a really big, <laughs> she's chilled again. And um, that for me would be a really good drive um, to know your clients here 
and yeah. to really target those yeah. as you would with any other new service yeah. <clears throat> any um, service that's coming out very soon hey and then again <laughs> like let's think about it as a new service rather than you know oh my god they you know the insurance companies are way laying on us we every single one of you guys you know you are the town's or the area's best salon that means we're proactive not reactive it means that we're forward thinking we are innovative and the other salons are sitting around scratching their heads trying to follow what we do so color start now i do appreciate the panic that i've been reading about that everyone is like oh none of my clients will pay that so let me again let's try and put this into a real life perspective how many of us know what clients have been offering silly money to get their hair done on the quiet honestly <laughs> way above our normal rates how much would you charge me to come around my house and do it on the quiet yeah. well two things come to mind that. for me one if they're willing to pay more or they are willing to pay more when they really really need us so think about your prices going up for a start and secondly if they are that desperate to break lockdown if they're that desperate to pay loads more money then surely they are going to be prepared to pay 15 pounds for a color start and 10 minutes online to do the, the um, color start sort of questionnaire yeah next That's slide it. please boss oh yeah sorry <laughs> so let me ask you a simple question 15 or even 10 years ago would you have contemplated selling a bottle of shampoo for 23 pounds or even smaller bottle of oil for 32 notes so how we, how did we do it? How did we do it when we first started moving into the luxury hair brand? We did cost versus benefit with the client. So how did you get over that price barrier, the one that you seem to have now with Colorstar? So we broke it down into usage. We know that potentially a client only has to have one passport, one skin test, 15 pounds, maybe for a year, maybe for 18 months, or maybe never, ever again, if nothing in her environment changes. So how many times does a six week client visit us? Now we know from Debbie's figures, six weekly, eight times a year, eight weekly, six times a year. So in theory, a client will visit us 12 times in the 18 month period that her passport might stay live. That's £1.25 for each colour. For time, like in that time frame, you have peace of mind. You've got safety of your business. And God knows how much inconvenience and aggro of skin testing and AAT every colour 12 times in that 18 months' time. Now, I know for Billericke, well, the our salon is, she's going to pay more than £1.25 for the parking every colour to come and have an AAT skin test. So I'm saving her money. Yeah. And think about the other color patch test. How, Debbie, or someone tell me how much a, a, an old um, color start patch test was. Is a pound? And we used to give that away free for every single color. This every is time. one pound. Sorry? <laughs> every color, every, every color, every time. So for one pound 25, for every color in the next 18 months, we have peace of mind. We have security for our business. We have a client that can turn up on the Saturday morning and go, I fancy a color change. Yes, Jude says, we can do it now. So yeah. let's think about this really, really simply. Um, my client won't pay that. Well, actually, if she's going to pay £23 for a bottle of shampoo, then I'm sure she's going to pay £15 for 18 months agro free coloring please yeah. let's think about this let's get our ducks in a row think about this straight my and passion also, for hair hat is back on guys okay thanks <laughs> and also what um i know we've talked about a little bit over the last um few uh webinars in, including with color that we 
um, have thought about being able to return that £15 back over three appointments with clients. So when you think about how much has Richard's broken that down and you think, oh my God, I've got to give them back £15, but actually when you think about it, it's only £1.25 each of their colour over that period of time. So I think you can work something really well into your um, into your system, into your protocol of how you're going to um, do this. And most of what we're talking about today and what we're looking at, everything's a protocol. Even how you use a product, it's got instructions. They are what steps that we need to follow. So I think that's really important. Um, <clears throat> and I did want to say, just in case you thought that that new Porsche sitting outside was paid for Color Star, I'm not sponsored by them at all. Um, I would personally be offering both options to my clients. I think um, um, that's a really important thing. I think that we have, like, as as a salon, um, as stylists, we have to uh, offer both options. Um, for those clients that I really know that really like a lot of changes every time they come in, ones that are really difficult, because I was having a conversation the other day, what I don't want to happen is, is for us to go back, you know, 10 or 15 years. We know um, by figures and numbers and cl classes we've done about how we can end up losing clients. And often it's because... Um, uh, they're getting the same again and the client does the hairdresser doesn't do a good consultation um, for enough changes each time they just say same color again and what I don't want is that if we're doing the ATT patch testing that we keep it that our clients are having the same every single time so that they don't need any changes so this for me is why I'm actually a huge advocate of um, color start because I think one giving me that relief that I know it covers everything I'm going to use in my toolbox that we're going to talk about today, covers all of those things. And it's really important if I've got clients that like those changes. And I am a mad colorist. I love changing people's she color. Is. She <laughs> is. I love changing people's color. And it would depress me to think that I would have to go. I need to do this, I need to do that. So I always want that option. I'm going to be able to talk to my clients. Part of the fact that we're, we're talking about doing consultations online, we're talking about let's see what's going on with the client, with their hair, how many difficulties have we've got to face with their hair. The thing would be to go straight in and say, the first thing we need to do is colour start patch test. It's slightly different to what we're used to. However, it does give me the option then to be able to use any product in my salon without having to skin test all the time for those really big changes. Yeah, so it's got, got to be a bonus, hasn't it's it? It's a massive bonus. And as a colorist, as a color, um, I know some of my clients that I've got, a, you know, five or six that I can put in um, and think that my clients love the same shade. But do I do the same shade on their hair every time? I tweak it fractionally. How will I tweak it? Probably staying on the same baseline, but I might add a little more beige or I want it to feel a little bit more pearly. Will I need to skin test with that every single time? No, I will do my questions and my criteria. Of course, she's gonna have an ATT test to start with. She won't worry about a color start. She might say to me, Jude, I don't have my eyelashes tinted, I don't have my eyebrows done, so I don't need to worry about having an overall package. I stay on the same blonde, which I know is around a 10. She always stays at a 10, but I tweak the tones fractionally. So I always have a few in, and that would be my, um, if she doesn't change her medication, if she hits those criteria questions all the time. Last time I put five grams of gold in, and two grams of something, you know, something else. I can tweak those, you see, so I can give her those small changes that she likes without having to worry about that particular skin test. If she was gonna go a shade or two darker, I'd have to say, Pat, hold on a minute, we're gonna need to skin test for that, and we're gonna need to do an AAT test, and that is that. 
It sounds so like you've got a client already in mind. Yeah, but and again, even in my mind, thinking about um, colour start, I have got maybe five or six clients in my mind that I know they need colour start. Don't even question me on that because I can't be dealing with the amount of changes that you like if, throughout a whole year. How would I do that? How would I manage that? And that's me managing my situation, keeping myself out of hysteria and being able to look at those scenarios. Does that help you guys with um, a few of those things for what we were looking at on the outside as a stylist or as a salon owner? Some little answers there, yeah. Okay, so um, I wanted to let you know, I, I've, I've got a third client doing hers now, but um, I've got two clients of mine that actually went straight forward and did um, Colour Start for me. Um, brilliant. And um, one was uh, no medication. She doesn't colour her hair that often. She's never had um, head and a tattoo. She went through all the criteria. She got the green light to go straight ahead. Now, one of the things that we came across, which is really important to share with your clients, so they go on to um, Colour Start. Now, one did that before I registered with Colour Start, and she told me that she searched for my name, couldn't find me, but was still able to access the start part for getting her passport. And the other client who um, has just finished chemotherapy, she's on lots of medication, da 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 she waited until after I registered as a salon with Colour Start and she found me and she did that procedure. So with Merrim, I got no um, email back or uh, a ding back to say that they'd registered. With my other client, Liz, um, it instantly came up to say, Liz has got the green light, she can go ahead with skin testing. Both clients said to me, what do I do next? because they got their green light and they said, does that mean I've got a green light to have my color? No, it means you've got the green light to put your patch test on the next part. She sent me a picture by the way, she's got it on um, today and uh, said, it's so clever. I'm so amazed by it. She said, it's brilliant. So they've both done this. What we did was color start, register, get the green light to be able to do that part. Then I've advised them to go to um, Salon Love and Liz went straight to Salon Love and she ordered hers and it's come through and like I said, she's done hers straight away. So it's really important the communication you're giving. If you're not letting your clients know um, that sometimes they both said to me, oh, the green light means I can have my colour done. No, the green light means you can do the patch test the actual patch that they give you and you need to order that through salon love yeah. does that make sense i really wanted to clear that up to say to you right you know these both clients and um just so that you know um my client's been like i say just finished chemotherapy so she has to take some medications she still passed screening questions so whatever her medication is particularly it doesn't affect her having that patch test. Now, this does not mean you can't ask that in your screening question, because maybe if her colour is not taking very well and there are other problems, this could be because the medication's putting a barrier on her hair particularly. We're not just talking, you see, about patch testing. Do you see what I'm saying here? So, yes, whilst we're all going crazy about that and asking she passed that criteria, her medication doesn't affect or won't encourage a reaction, so she can do that because it's now medicine. That's that part. I still need to know those screening questions because I still need to understand whether or not her hair will be in a delicate state, perhaps, um, like I say, it'll put a barrier on what she's doing and things like that. So two separate parts. So how is that with everybody? so far are we all together has that helped you if you've got any questions about anything like that because we're going to move off of this test <laughs> yeah we sure are. <laughs> it, it does come down to again the preparation doesn't it getting your your screening questions sorted making sure your protocol is in place 
ASAP so that you can move forward in a, a systematic, chilled way rather than hysteria. Brilliant. So, um, Rich, you loved this, didn't you? I did. I screenshot this. This was after Debbie's amazing chat with Sophia Hilton. Um, and I just wanted to put it in here because, you know, we want to be chilled going forward. And I felt that these three steps and the answers for these three steps solved pretty much the hysteria thinking and it just brought you back down. So you choose your protocol, you choose your screening questions, you, you'd like make sure that we are complying, our duty of care, best practice, hairdressing standards, um, using the NHBF um, new toolbox, for example. Um, check with your insurance that you are covered by doing that protocol. And then if you are not covered, do one of two things. You change your protocol so that your insurance company agrees with you and you get it in writing or change your insurance company. Um, and as uh, Sophia Hilton said, it's literally as simple as that. And that's why I thought I wanted to sh share that. But of course, Colour Start solves most of those problems because Colour Start has its own indemnity for reactions. Um, yeah. Obviously, if someone decides that you've damaged their hair and then comes to you, Colour Start won't cover that. So check with your insurance company, guys. Please, please. All right. So um, <laughs> what I wanted to do was... Um, Oh, look, see, I, I already noticed I put A18 instead of, yeah, that's right. I've been driving myself crazy with that. A18, T, 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 T. I'm like, <laughs> my brain has been, I know, I've been crazy. Okay, so um, one of the things I was thinking about um, as a salon owner, how are we going to manage um, the skin testing in the salon, our A18? Of course, we know how we're going to manage Colour Start because that's straightforward and now, um, the fabulous um, salon love they can go straight on there and it's brilliant so we can advise them through our emails through our um, Facebook and all our um, interaction with our clients through the fact that we're going to be talking to our clients and making sure our consultations some of them can be done online at least or if they're not and they're like they're not massive changes but I need to skin test I'm like okay this is what you need to do just by phone conversation but I thought about some ideas about how we're going to do this in um, the salon and the most important and when you need to do that. We've already talked about when you're making big changes. So when will you need to reskin test before if their screening questions stay the same and they're staying the same sort of shades, we don't need to do that. But when they need big color changes, when they're changing a whole shade or two going darker, um, and you're going to do lots of products maybe going lighter yes we need to think about updating those um uh tests now we need to because they need to fall in line with our color notes that we're keeping um our keep sorry now color notes are more important now than ever and the reason that they're so important it gives um an insurance company or whoever's not just about whoever's going to take over in the salon of that client's hair but obviously if we're in a salon like ourselves maybe i might not put the regrowth on and i need to make sure my color notes are on there i can already hear you girls at halo saying jude this is you i am a horror for putting my notes because everything is in my mind and because i like changing my colors so frequently i hate everything <laughs> thanks steph i love your support there i just love it um, I like changing my colours all the time. So this is something that I'm really going to have to put in my working day. I'm going to make have to make sure that I spend at least 15 minutes to make sure I've really made sure all my notes are up to date with my clients. Because Charlie, I'm, you know this isn't going to happen. So you're going to be writing colour notes all day long. I just, I love your support, you lot, in this chat today. You're so kind to me. So that for me is really um, the probably the most important because now with the skin testing changes and what's happening there, 
if I'm making big changes, they need to be on there. Does that make sense? So everything's got to line up. Um, we need to think about timings for our testing and it needs to be 48 hours before. But if you're part of um, passion and you're part of our world, if you're unsure, please always, always come back to us and say, and I know that we've been saying, yes, if you need to do that on a Saturday to do those tests, that's okay for a Monday if you're shut Monday. That's okay and we'll help support you and give you the right decisions. So if you are unsure, just ask us here and we'll give you that um, dedication. I also thought about um, dedicated areas and timing for um, our AAT testing. Get my words out, put my teeth in. Um, so having a dedicated area, maybe having a little toolkit that's got all your things inside so that you don't need to keep run, running around. Um, I'll answer that question for you in a minute, Andrea, yep. Um, so you're not running around getting all the things that you need. So making sure, for example, we have um, the cotton buds ready to be able to do that. Uh, you can see the videos. I'm going to encourage you to use the videos um, within your social media or your emails about what skin testing looks like. Apply a little, wait a few minutes, apply some more. Again, just to build up, making sure that you always use your oxidation with the tin. It's important, imperative in fact. Um, so if we have a dedicated area and we have dedicated timing, so I was thinking either early or late. Sometimes it's hard if you're busy and the salon is busy and then we have clients just dropping by to do this skin testing. But perhaps if you know the team finish at 530 but for example, or 7.30, but their, their hours don't finish till eight. You could say you've got between half past seven and eight o'clock to finish your cleaning. Much quieter environment in the salon, so we're following social distancing rules still, and you've got some time to move around. I also thought about having, some of you guys are really prepared, you've got iPads and things in the salon and for those clients that want to be colour star and say yes I want to do that because I don't want to drop by all the time that would drive me mad but they're unsure about being online how to do that we can guide them through that because we've perhaps got an iPad that just helps them so we can get online and do that with them um, Absolutely, and I do think again market this you know make this a new service make this the innovation that you as the salon are leading the area with. Um, and, you know, skin test every client every time. Five years ago, no one was doing it. And then. No. So, you know, one of the things I know, um, just through experience, what um, insurance companies, sadly, what they look for um, is a um, signature for a skin test. Of course, when, because they're applying to Colour Start on their own, that gives them, and they are in they have to add all their details in. That gives us that solution there. We don't have to worry about that. That's their own GDPR, that's their own everything. We don't need to worry about any of those. But um, what I had before, and I don't know if you guys have seen, but in the beginning, I always had a book that you couldn't, that we can't rip pages out of to be able to just ask the client to sign um, and sign it have a signature to say that they have had that test that would be good for me that is one of the most important things that my insurance company look for is a signature when you're doing an AAT test so we have to think about how we're going to do that just keep it really simple I know on the delightful Amazon you can buy the skin testing pads and for a little while I had those but I understand my insurance company don't like those because there is a part on it which is really outdated and probably you might have seen it, you might not have. But on it, it says, I accept a skin test. I don't accept a skin test. We know as hairdressers, we can't colour if they don't have a some sort of skin test. So I don't want that option being on there. So just for my own personal reason, please look at the forms um, they're brilliant. They are. They do say, and you get a copy for the client and a copy for you. But I don't like what's written on there. And also, it says um, 
If you're under 16, parents can sign. That's got to stop. We can't colour under 16s, even with parents' permission. So this is a, something that's really important for me. If you are using those for, for clients to sign, please think about that. I think it's better that you just have a standard book that you're able to put your months in, get your client to sign it. You've always going to keep that information. You've always got that signature. If you're using a salon software, have a look at the software because it gives you updated when your dates of your skin test are and you can correlate that back. So it's no problem. Yeah, Does well, that we've also you... got the um, NHBF record cards, which would also be something really, really yeah, useful. Yeah, if you're to not online. Well. Yeah, you can, Ruth. That's a really good question. Can you get them to sign on the colour note saying they've had a skin, they've had their skin test? Yeah, absolutely. Um, for me, one of my things is that I keep all of my stuff on the computer so it's in the cloud. Um, I'm going to go over the other tests that I need to keep in a minute. But for me, that keeps that out of the way. And then I only have one book for skin testing for that. So, um, that part works but yes absolutely if you're doing big color notes which i'm really um and you're telling them step by step what they need to do get them to sign everything and that's brilliant and then you just and you keep that so yeah brilliant idea um how is that does that kind of give you like when i was saying about toolbox i thought well, what are all the things that we need to do a quick little skin test i know maybe like little pieces of like little mini tissues in there to be able to pop on if clients don't always check if they can have a plaster um i i actually can't have the micropore tape so that wouldn't work for me i would have to be one that had that and pop a little tissue on that remember not to do it in that right crease of the arm because you bend and then that's gonna smudge it so it just needs to be kind of below and then you, that way you can um keep that covered uh, so i might have all of those little things just in a little box and then i haven't got a whiz around the salon i've got a dedicated area that everybody knows that's where we skin test and the other idea that i really liked is and this is important I, i'm very very lucky not everybody is but both of my fabulous um, receptionists are both hairdressers so they can administer those um AAT tests for me because they're qualified, they know what they're doing and they're going to get retraining to do that. So I'm really, really lucky um, and they are able to do that. But that, if we can dedicate just certain people for that as well, it stops the limit of contact, the amount of people. And agreed, um, Elaine, if a girl looks 18 and is 15, should we ask for ID? Always ask for ID. Yeah, if in, if in doubt, I was like, asked for ID, yeah. Um, okay, so Marie's got a good question there. Does census want a skin test for every tint shade used, i.e. if mixture was 60, 611 or roots of 50 and 8 for 4, does this mean two skin tests? Okay, it would mean two skin tests if you were changing from one to the other. We've talked with Debbie that we could confirm that using the darkest shade would be appropriate. Don't you think, Richard? Yes, I do. If I, yes. If I, would, I would go with the six and six one one mixed together. Um, the darker shade. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Or of course, color style. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but of course, if she's um, pregnant or those um, medications that meet those screening questions, and they can't do that, then that's what we're going to need to do. Um, does that help with that question for you, Marie? And for anyone else that's worried about that. Great. Okay, so um, I think my next part is um, what we've just talked about here. So we talked about thinking about when, how, um, remember no under 16s. So the other part I wanted to show you just quickly is um, this week I knew... Um, listening to um, our chats and obviously Clubhouse and bits and pieces, I've really realised that um, NHBF were waiting to up update their toolkit and they have. So um, here is um, a client information colour sheet. I thought it would be really helpful to show you, perhaps you guys, if you're part of the NHBF and they're 
you're going to have a look at their protocols and that's going to be part of your salon service. This is a great way to um, start telling your clients it's some information. I know that um, they do a kit. Um, this is one of them. This is, um, does your client need an allergy alert or industry, industry test? So um, can you see how that started to change now? Or an industry test? So industry tests meaning colour start. <laughs> so you can start to see how the NHBF, um, I think courtesy of keep going on at them about how we need they needed to be right at that forefront so they're starting to make sure all these things are in place um they have a fantastic toolkit um you get some posters for the salon to be able to educate your clients while they're in there one of those uh, definitely i'm going to be putting them up in the salon i never had them before um because we talk about communicating but i really think it's something interesting for clients to be able to read also when it says industry tests it may well also mean strain tests porosity tests incompatibility tests and again recording those as well so we'll go into that in a yeah, moment we are so and um, victoria is asking as we're on skin testing here about using high lift um, and skin testing and what peroxide would you use as this guest is breastfeeding and can't use colour start of course so um, I think something with this question um, to confirm with uh, Debbie on this but I do believe depending if you're just using high lift or do you tone as well afterwards because if you're using a high lift and maybe then you're toning um, you're going to need to make sure that because that's going to be one of the darkest shades no toner as it is I would skin test um, as you are because that's the shade that she has that's the shade that she likes yeah and if there's no toners don't forget also as well um, we've got a fantastic range of toners to be able to use without um, skin testing we've got all our bang color direct colors barred so we've really got some options there that we are able to tone if um, we were doing something like some bleach highlights but they can't have any toner so it's thinking about how we meet our clients expectations and what they need and of course the wonderful zero yellow shampoo and conditioner yeah yeah absolutely um now those were our um, two uh, industry uh, forms that I was showing you about. Um, also for you guys that are part of, I know Salon IQ have got their screening questions, which are really great to put out before you, part of our day to days talking about um, uh, how we keep this information, what we're looking about. Well, Salon IQ, you can instantly send out that um, screening questions i don't know what um computer things that you guys are using but have a look and also now you know the nhbf have updated theirs it's important that you look at your screening questions that are created in the hubs or on your environment that um you update your questions or make sure that your um it software is updating their questions because that's really important we want that really nice flow and then you haven't got to start worrying because when you're thinking about keeping these tests you can get this information immediately so even before you arrange a online skype however you're going to do that you can have these questions answered because you could say, could you fill that in for me? And it keeps that on the notes. Um, also as well, I think um, one of the questions for Salon IQ are uh, to check for me, I don't know for your other IT softwares, is I wanna make sure that there is, are there any um, specific big changes that you're gonna require for your next color? Because if I get that back, and that alerts me to say, yes, I don't know how I'm going to do that system yet, but I will. I then have those 
couple of days before to say, what is it you need changing? What do we need to do? If you're not color stuck and you're going much darker or you're doing this, that's okay, but I need to skin, you need to drop by so I can skin test you for your darker shades. So having them answer these screening questions, including what changes are you requiring or are you really quite happy with your hair right now? Might be, it feels a bit gold, it feels a bit brassy, feels this, uh, or I want big, big changes. And then you can analyze really well, commercially, how that fits in your salon so that you don't have to turn that client away. So those screening questions could be part consultation questions, part Absolutely. safety skin tests as, as well. Yeah. yeah, without a doubt. Little one, because I'm like, ah, ah, ah. I'm always like that, aren't I? Okay, so definitely moving on now. If you're all happy with, of course, um, to remind you that we're we're there to support you with anything about colour start, your A AAT testing, everything like this. We're there to support you. So if there is. But I'd really like us to move on from that so I don't drive you all crazy this morning just on that. But I hope what Richard and I tried to do was just try to say, okay, this is good. Let's look at this logically. Let's get our little ducks in a row and think, no, we can do it like this. We can have a little area there. We can do this and really get our protocols all in line so that we know what we're doing and then our staff knows what we're doing. I haven't even booked a single client in yet because I what my head couldn't get round. I had to sort this all out first before I so I knew what I was saying to my clients. I couldn't. I couldn't. Well, preparing this, <laughs> will, preparing yeah. this will have done that for you. Absolutely. We now know. All right. So, Rich, uh, you chat about um, your consultation skills because I think you're fantastic watching you. My <laughs> consultation skills. Just to trim. <laughs> okay, so, um, yeah, uh, consultation, Like, the, I think the biggest thing now is at the moment is we're not going to be able to rely on everything that we do being absolute face-to-face -face with our clients because one social distancing lockdown, we're not able to do that now. So um, I think that it's going to be really, really important to either send out an email with some of the screening questions. It's going to be FaceTime. I can't tell you how many clients are going to love being face to face with you and chatting to you. They're just desperate to speak to somebody. Um, Skype, um, Zoom is there um, and also any, on, any online sort of aspect that we can do. Um, as it says, the virtual interaction is essential. I think for mental health, the clients are going to just really, really want to be able to touch base with you. Um, once you've had a chat with your client, then at least you can find out exactly what you need to do and therefore be able to book in accordingly. One, you're going to need to know what skin tests, what other tests you're going to be needing to do before that client comes into the salon or you're not going to be able to book that client in if you need to do strand tests, for example, or porosity tests. Um, finding out, like you said, finding out exactly why well, they're going to be looking for a change means that you may not actually be able to book your client in for what she wants in that first week. We might need to come in for a salon consultation before we book further, further ahead. But I wanted to add, don't forget about MC2 Fast Colour because it is a perfect solution to bumble somebody over. And it also gives you, it meets your client's expectations by getting rid of those roots for them or being able to solve that problem just for that moment. And then saying, okay, I know you want a big change, but to be able to do this, I need to follow these things and I need a test cutting. I need to do this. I need to do that. Um, but let's pop fast color on today so that we can disguise your roots, get rid of your roots, and then we are really able to go forward with our plan because I won't be able to fit that in today. So you don't let your client down, you pick up the value of cost to your, your salon. So you know, sometimes you can hear stylists go, it's all right, don't worry, we'll just book you in, in like next week, two weeks time for your color. And I think, oh, but you could have done fast color so that they look nice with that covered their roots and then you can then book in what's needed for the rest of the um, time because it might be they needed three or four visits to the salon 
Yeah, I think so. I, I think you've, you know, again, the realistic expectation comes into this. If a client comes in and you are not able to do that, then it would be at least, let's see if we can do what we're doing at the moment. Let's add a few highlights because you want to go a little bit lighter or some low lights because you want to come down a little bit darker for this time. Let's get this booked in ASAP so that you're able to satisfy the client yeah. within that realistic expectation. Um, I see. Fard is brilliant. Um, I'm going to let you know. Um, Fard is brilliant for uh, really toning down a shade um, for your client without the commitment. And um, it's a really great way to add that. So, um, I can answer quickly how fast colour is, uh, just because I can see, Zoe, you've typed that up there. Um, please have a look at our um, Passion for Hair YouTube channel because fast colour um, uh, presentation is on there for you and it will really give you all the information. But fast colour is our MC2, uh, no ammonia, no PPD, and it, you're able to colour the hair within 10 minutes. Um, but it's very specific and you can't go too much lighter and you have to stay around one or two shades of where they're at. So there's some really helpful, useful information on there that you can go over, but it's a great tool to have in the salon where you need to just um, be able to meet an expectation for the client. Yeah. Um, so um, I'll, Okay, to answer that one now for you, Gary, can you use fast colour on big roots to cover? No, I don't advise you to use fast colour on big roots and I don't advise it for, um, because fast colour is about speed. So if you've got a large regrowth area to do, you, you should be thinking about, we're going to go over it, but reverse colouring, the type of peroxide that you need to help with that lift so you don't get banded in. So fast colour is... Perhaps they've coloured their own hair um, over this time. You've done your patch test and you know that with your incompatibility, but they've got teeny roots. You know you're going to have to get all that out, but you could top that up. If they've got somewhere nice to go, you can top it up. It's just fast action. Um, but please have a little look on um, the YouTube channel because I'm on there blowing on about MC2 fast colour. Okay. <laughs> okay. I just wanted to say, I know, I know some of you guys are sitting there thinking, "Holy cow! This has got we've got so much to do." Um, this is a great idea to get your team back into the game now. Let's start getting our team back involved. Let's get your stylists contacting their clients for you, so that they can do this. This isn't down to the salon owner to do all of this because. Actually, as a salon owner, you don't know all of your clients that intimately with their colour, their needs. The stylist does. Maybe we need to start bringing our team back in, doing their consultations online, um, and we can start getting this moving in the next couple of days so that we're all very, very prepared, hopefully, for the 12th of April. Yeah, absolutely. And just to remind you guys that, no, you can't skin test before we're opening, but Colour Start is our solution. So already I, my clients in my mind that I know that I want for Monday and Tuesday are my ones that are no problem with Colour Start. Yeah, me too. I've already, they're already on Colour Start, um, yeah. ready for the Monday and the Tuesday for the clients. That so I'm that's doing. a great way to cover that for you. Um, so and, and actually, can I just say that one of them I was a little worried about whether she was going to want to do that. And the offer was, if you want your hair coloured on Tuesday, then you need to do this. If you don't want it coloured, like if you don't want to process the colour start, then we'll need to move your appointment back. And I was going to change one of my evenings for her. But actually, she said, no, I want my hair done as soon as possible. And, and actually, it quite surprised me, you know, because I'd stupidly assumed and I'd you know, fortune told that this client didn't want to pay £15. Actually, she was so gagging at the bit to get her roots done, she wants to do the colour start yeah, to get it surprises on you, the Tuesday. It? Yeah, please don't think that my client can't afford that or she doesn't want to do it. Um, end of Richard's rant. Onwards <laughs> and upwards. But we did that. Yeah, I think it's really important. So... Um, Part of our consultation to break down that easily is to have um, our objective to really determine 
um, you know, and interpret the type of colour that they're heading towards and why. Um, and you can discuss this without um, even your colour charts because often clients can send you pictures of things that you like or they like. And it's really important that you ask them what do they love the most about that picture so that you don't get caught up in a filter scenario. Um, so that is one thing that I would say is really important. Um, to analyse their current situation. So a lot of these big, big changes, we are not going to be able to analyse and be able to do that until they come in. Um, or they can send you a photo of their current hair. Yeah, absolutely. But you know if you need to restart balayaging, you know if you need to restart doing all those things. There are lots of different ways. So maybe you need to think about saying to your client, we can't do a balayage on that particular day because, but perhaps they need to even out their all over colour first and then this making your balayage easy. So what you need to think about there is, okay, well, your colour's similar to what you've got. We've got to balance all the colour, make them one colour. Then we've got to decide about bleaching. So, of course, if they're really open with you, we don't have to think about doing colour removers and things like that. We could do that in two steps of a balayage because then we're able to take test cuttings on coloured hair that we've just coloured and made it nice and even to see how that's going to lift up. And then they're able to book that part back in. So you see we're meeting that expectations. Yes, we need to balance that first. Then we can put your foilage pieces in, your balayage or your ombre sections in afterwards. And we know how the hair is going to lift. So start thinking about how we diagnose that. How that won't that be easier for you? Because I know myself when I have to do foilage and balayage and do colours in between, it's a longer period of time for me. Yet I could break that service down into two parts because I'm being really honest about getting all my ducks in a row with tests that I need to do and I'm meeting their me needs as well yeah so you know what I think um what we need to be really doing like if you want to keep everything comfortable and, and and being able to deal with everything is let's think about all of your clients as if they were a new client great let's so, start from fresh absolutely so you're not assuming what you knew about a regular client is what it's going to be so, so you, let's treat everyone as a new client in your, in your head. Even though I know this person, it's a new colour. So one of the things that we talked about is not uh, that we tend to forget about is um, forgetting to check hair, um, the scalp from abrasions and scratches because they're going to be using dry shampoos a little bit more, makes your scalp a little itchier, I know. Maybe they're using root covers that are not our beautiful root covers and there's something else that is irritating them. So um, you need to ask them to remove all of that before they come in the night before. Don't wash it on the morning. I'd like it done the night before um, so that you can, the hair and scalp settles ready for colouring. These things are really important and it's important for you to check their scalp um, because if they do have any areas that are open, when we were training, this was a normal thing that we would just look through the client's head, wouldn't we? Sometimes I feel like we don't do that as much anymore as a um, developed stylist. It's a thing that we sort of forget about. Um, and this is really important for bleaching. Um, some of these questions we'll ask answer at the end, if that's okay, so that we don't um, get yeah, lost. I think some of the processes that we're going through will automatically answer some of these questions for you. Um, okay, Rich? Yeah, let's, let's go with um, some of the physical preparation. Once we've done our screenings um, and we've possibly done some consultations, we may need to prepare the hair, prepare the scalp um, physically before the client actually comes in. Now, Colour Prepare is one of the wonderful products that we can send out to our client um, prior and allow them to do this. What I'd like you to do is, in the simplest possible terms, think of this as a client version of crystal gel. This will take out all of any minerals, any 
um, impurities, any medication buildup in the same way that crystal gel, but not to the extent. But if your client or is your system and coming out of lockdown isn't going to allow you to get a client in and have a crystal gel treatment prior to the service, then this is a fantastic alternative. So by sending this out, getting the client, like talk your client through this, it will prepare the hair, the scalp ready for whatever you need to be able to do. Um, I can also say to you, like hard water sachets is a very, very similar product. Um, We're getting there, Rich. Yeah, 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 <laughs> I know, I know. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm jumping ahead a little done. bit, but we have just, products here that we can get your client to use prior to coming in. This will get rid of the, the, the medication buildups, the, the scalp, the, the colour touch-up products as well. Um, so this is this is one of going to be one of your best friends in the next few weeks if we're starting to talk to our clients ready and they've done anything to their care themselves. Um, just so that we stay up above with the skin testing, I know Elaine's asked us if we have to skin test when using a toner after bleach highlights. Yes, you will if it's an oxidative colour for sure. But if you're toning with zero yellow, fards, uh, bang colour, anything like that, uh, that has on the requirements that you don't need to skin test, then you can tone just like that. So they are perfect. But if you're using oxidative colour or anything like that side, um, in blondes, metallics, anything like this, they must be skin tested. Okay. Um, I just wanted to quickly show you a very, very light, in a very, very fast light manner, but maybe you could share this with some of your team members is to remember when you're analyzing the hair, how you would match. So you can see here the um, of using the um, color chart swatches is really important. Um, we went for a spell that we didn't really use color charts um, so much because we wanted to get into consultations and we wanted to um, kind of put them away. Well, I think, I think as a colorist, you need to get them back out, um, not for the not for the client for so much, but for you to be able to understand that you're getting the right diagnostic with the colour on the ends, the right diagnostic of their natural colour, and um, where they really want their target shade to be. So you can still be creative with photos and add those in, but you need your colour chart to get really good results, so you can really analyse. Yes. If you love the product loads, you could say, oh, that looks like a 6.3. But really check, is it a 6.3 or does it look more like a 5.3? If it look more like a 5.3 and you've got a question, always go with the 5.3, go with the darker shade because whenever you're changing, lifting or anything like that, that's the most important thing. So I really wanted to just say, get your colour charts back and make sure they're all looking lush because we're really going to need to analyze and the yeah, only gone, way the days that, are, gone are the days of giving your client the color chart in their lap and say pick a color that's what yeah, we, we got away that. from it's not a consultation tool it's a diagnostic tool so it's a very separate issue isn't it that's a great way to put it richard i like it thank you so um what we how these have made a comeback. So the skill set of stylists today is dedicated by trends of the day and those trends change. It's vital that we update our skills. Um, one of the, the needs of a client are definitely more complex than ever and they expect more than ever. Our insurances want us to maintain this level of experience. So one of the things that we talk about at Passion, we, we know um, how fantastic it is that we can be able to pick up some of our classes on points and work those systems. It's important that you encourage all of your staff to really think about, yes, their product sales, for sure, for other reasons, but thinking about tying that with their education because a good, like a good stylist is a informed stylist. So some stylists are like, oh, I've been doing it 20 years, I don't need any um, things, I know what I'm doing, blah, blah, blah. But you'll find that you won't be insured by your insurance companies because they'll say, where is your CPD? How have you continued to learn? 
when was the last time you went on a product course, a product management course, like to understand what products you're using? So when we have new products launched or however we're doing, do these classes, think about, because this is updating your skills all the time to say to your insurance companies, if you're experienced, and please God that nobody does, but this is why we're professionals. So this part for me is as important that we are constantly updating our skills. So um, us, when you first qualified and you think, oh, that's it, no more training, I'm happy, I don't have to do any of that. It's important that you carry on with your product training without a doubt for a good, you know, every time something new comes out, update yourself. Doesn't it keep you excited as a hairdresser, like mm -hmm. knowing that there's new products out there, there's new techniques, there's new options to give to your client. <laughs> and now if we're being if we're being told that we need to update and be trained constantly by our insurance companies, it's our duty of care, you know, to, to be able to do that. So, Elaine, I wasn't sh saying that we shouldn't show our colour chart. I was actually saying our colour chart should definitely be out. Um, perhaps what they do is they choose a colour that's on a magazine or on a picture that they like, and then we show them with the colour charts where that roughly sits. But really, less about consultation with the colour chart, because we're asking the questions, do they like it like this? How is that? Do they like a little bit of warmth? And then we can guide them to particular shades in the chart. But really, um, for us, the colour chart is our diagnostic. We need that massively. So yes, there should be some interaction with the client, pictures, what they like, how that's going to work, and what, and we guide them to what we think would work best. So I wouldn't years ago we just used to give them the whole chart and say have a little look through but now we should be encourage them whether they should be to the cool browns or the mahogany browns and things like that so we're we're choosing where they should be yeah there's sometimes clients see a, they have a color chart in front of them and they want a 5.24 <laughs> and they actually think you're going to use 5.24 whereas obviously we know we're not actually going to use 5.24 to get 5.24 that's that's why i always had a problem with a color chart personally so yeah. um, i love six six photographs bring me selection of photographs i like the ones that they really hate i'm like tell me something that you really don't like so if you're choosing your blonde please show me a blonde that you really don't like so yeah. i always make them bring a something they really dislike because then I go, aha, but that's what it's going to look like because you've got too much colour on. So it helps me um, guide them with that. Yes. So here we are, Rich, you do porosity because I go blah, blah, blah. <laughs> are you sure? Yeah. You was on a roll then, weren't no. you? <laughs> okay, so porosity. We know that hair is porous. Um, hair in good condition will maintain its porosity. It will gain water, it will get rid of water. If the hair and the cuticle is any way, its integrity is any way damaged, then the hair becomes more and more porous, which means it will gain and lose moisture. It will gain and lose color very, very quickly. Um, the These... test, sorry, fire away. I was going to say these next two tests, Rich and I have been talking last, this week saying actually we should be talking to these a little bit more to our clients about it because they could really start to understand their hair more and they could really understand how products help them and prepare for our colouring services. And probably they'll say, oh, my hair just feels a bit drier, it feels a bit like this, but we could really start encouraging them to understand how this side works a little bit more yeah. uh, when when you sort of said we could, you know you we could get our clients to be doing this themselves at home you know almost like a, some homework a little experiment they can show their kids and all sorts of things get them really in into knowing more and more about their hair so the porosity test is taking one strand of hair and that is clean it needs to be clean um, pop it into a clean container of room temperature water and let it flow. If it floats, 
it has a low porosity test. It's in better condition and it's going to hold its colour better. It's not going to give us too many problems with toner fade or reds taking and holding in. Um, if it settles midway, and I've this always baffled me how it does this. You know, like but it science does. wasn't science wasn't my strong point. You know, my physics teacher would be amazed that I know some of this stuff. Um, but it does actually settle in the middle. Um, and obviously, the more porous the hair, the more water it sucks in and the more it will drop to the bottom. That's when we have a problem um, from our colouring point of view and our condition point of view. Um, also, you can get your client to take the hair and shut her eyes on a few strands of hair and run her fingers down the hair. And she will feel like almost like the bobbles as it runs down. And you'll find that it will be smooth, a little bit rougher, and then actually bobbly towards the end. And you can show her where her hair is porous. And therefore, then we have solutions to sort out this. This is a really important test. You are going to have colour fade. You're going to have colour not taken unless we talk about porosity. So our next is um, our stretch and pull tests. Um, that we have a look. There's actually some really good information out there and um, I had a little look through um, Carly, hers. she does some great um, work on her last presentation that she did again on the YouTube channel and she yeah, really that was a fantastic presentation. Yeah and I really really enjoyed that because um, a stretch and pull test otherwise known as an elasticity test so um, and one of the things that um, we talked about and we've talked about with Carly is that we look at how the hair, we do this on wet hair between um, your thumb and your finger and pull the hair slowly to see how the stretch works. Now, um, one of these things that's really important as well is when you're bleaching hair and you're doing something that's all over, a stretch and pull test and elasticity test as we know should be carried out very, very gently whilst we're working with our colours, especially while lifting. Um, and you should make notes that when you do that. So if you're doing scalp bleaches and things and then running the bleach all the way through, I really want you to focus on remembering to do these at points. So I was looking about at salon procedures. There's a fantastic one in um, LA. And um, I was listening to how uh, they would doing this crazy talk on how they were um, managing their clients and often what they do and I really liked it because we've been talking a lot about assistants juniors we've got away from the word junior um, and we're using assistant and um, we're teaching our assistants how to do these tests learning how to do that at college etc when they were saying in LA we have a um, bleaching specialist so that would be me I would be bleaching the hair and then afterwards we're going to pop you over to our toning specialist and that would be for me Charlie he's fantastic at toning and I can tell him and tell him what I'm after and what shade specifically it can do that but I love how they talk about these people only these people looking after that one client's hair and throughout, there is a management colorist. So somebody that is managing that color, checking with the client every 10 minutes. How is that feeling? How are you, you know, when you're doing big work, how is your color feeling? How is your scalp feeling? Um, everything's fine, just checking. Being able to do that test on the ends of the hair to make sure, how is that feeling? Insurance companies do expect you to do that throughout um, it's something that I learned and it's something that has to be part of our bleaching specialist um, techniques um, again hopefully our courses will be back underway again so this really helps now with this test as well before when it's wet hair you can test um, whether the hair needs more moisture or a little more protein so of course, if the hair snaps, uh, if you take a small part and stretches and it breaks um, very, very easily and abruptly, you definitely need more moisture. So we're thinking about hair that is very bleached, say very highlighted. We know, we before we would say, actually we would think, oh, you need some protein, but actually we know it needs more moisture. It needs to hydrate. Once it's hydrated, it stops breaking. It's like your skin, when it's hydrated, it doesn't, 
crack so much it doesn't split so much so we have to think about hydrating that hair um, when the hair stretches but does not come back to normal um, with the elasticity you need to think about protein and we have thinking about um, it's passion for hair YouTube channel um, <laughs> and, and so here are some products that we Rich and I thought about and we had a little look that would really help you with protein levels hydration levels again something that clients lose their hair during the day when they're brushing their hair maybe they can take a piece out maybe you could teach them how to check for this how is your hair feeling they're saying it feels it's getting really brittle it just feels dry all the time why we can teach you how to do a little test to feel for the hair and then i can guide you of what you might need yeah i like i used to use the analogy a lot of when you used to stretch an elastic band you know, like sitting at school with an elastic band. If you have yeah. a really old, dry elastic band, it doesn't stretch at all, does it? It just shatters and snaps straight away. And you know that that's because the rubber has dried out. It's really dry and brittle. And that's the analogy I always use the clients with the hair when it snaps exactly. The other thing that some of the ingredients that we use is the fatty acids in the products that help with the elasticity as well. Um, and the, any product that feels slimy to the touch will contain fatty acids as well. So that's just a really simple way of explaining to your clients why they would need certain products with certain ingredients. Um, so the products that we would use, crystal gel actually will then take off any residue on the hair that will actually allow a strand test to, to actually happen properly. If you've got a buildup of minerals, if you've got a buildup of hard water, the hair isn't going to be able to, you're not going to be able to do a strand test properly because that buildup will stop that from allowing it to stretch properly. Um, so if you have products that um, are snap, or you have hair that is snapping, the products that I would seriously look at are the Mixable Plus standalones. They stop snappage immediately. We also have Miracle Repair by um, Malibu C. Uh, Miracle Repair is a fantastic mix of protein and moisture and fatty acids. So that will, again, stop snappage immediately. So the Malibu C makeover has the perfect combination for me. Um, crystal gel to remove, Malibu C, Miracle Repair to repair all the damage that you can now see after doing a crystal gel. Now, obviously, that needs to be salon-based. Um, so there's, there's a minor yeah. A delay and process. Also, don't forget on your Illumina side, when you were talking about the fatty um, acids, when it feels like that, is don't forget that we've got our boosters and we've got our repair booster. And um, if you feel them when you squeeze the boosters out, um, you can actually feel um, the product and they instantly stop that snappage. And you can sell the boosters separately to put with the conditioners for your clients. So if they're really looking at that, especially after bleaching, I absolutely love that product for them to take with as a booster. So you should be looking about that and talking about how you can prevent that snappage. Yeah, so we've got Urgent Repair Mask, which is another high, pro high protein product. Mm -hmm. um, and the BE um, Elixir Mask is again, a wonderful, wonderful combination of protein and moisture. Um, if I'm allowed a favourite product, that might be No, it. no, you're not allowed a favourite one. Might, might, I might be. Anyway, okay. So <laughs> um, the wonderful thing about the Malibu C range, if you guys aren't into the Malibu C as much and you might only have a few little products in your toolbox, the wonderful thing about these are you have three conditioners. Now, in equal amounts, these three products are your miracle repair the perfect balance of all three. If you need different requirements of your treatment in salon, obviously we have our census mixes and all of our lovely formulas. And the wonderful thing is if you go onto the salon app, you can sit with your client and talk through your hair. Your client can actually fill in on the salon app, the census app, and you can then get her to determine what product she needs and the take home afterwards. I don't know if you guys have ever done that. 
It's an amazing thing. It's one of our favorite things to do on the Salon iPad. The Malibu C has three products um, and you can mix and match depending on your need. Jude, can we switch back to yeah. the one before? So if you guys can get in close on your screen, we have winning combos of all of the needs that you might find by determining a strand test. And by mixing and matching these three products, you can specify, you can personalize your treatments for your client at home. Thank and as, you. as Holly was, uh, she just asked if you'd do these treatments before color services. Absolutely, if I thought that my client needed a course of doing these treatments, I would recommend that they do two or three of these treatments at home before they um, came in to have their colour service because it's really going to help prepare their hair. Um, that might be their journey. You sometimes have clients, especially now, that have bleached their own hair and done all sorts of things. So these fantastic cocktails, the booster, Illumina booster cocktails that we can use are really going to help to um, push that client into taking more care of herself, um, her hair. So, yeah, I definitely would recommend that. Yeah, and um, again, let's get into consultation with this, um, making sure we preempt any future problems by talking about in our consultation. You know, yeah. if, you're, if you have a client that you can see has dry ends and yet she wants this toner to hold in, the reason her toner isn't going to hold is because of the porosity, the damage on the end. So educate your clients up front that, yes, we can do this, but actually, you might well be wasting your money because the colour is going to fade very, very quickly because of the condition of your hair. Let's think about this, talking and giving our clients the information they need. And as we showed here, you can do some sachets. So if you thought that they maybe just need a course of um, three and then you wanted to give them maybe BE elixirs as a home care kit, um, you could do that. So we could use something that we needed to do at one point beforehand and then give them their recommended um, aftercare kit. So aftercare. So for me, maybe afterwards, um, I would be looking at sort of zero yellows and things like this. Um, and I would be looking at my boosters to go alongside those because um, my zero yellow perhaps isn't as hydrating as um, the Nutri uh, Repair for example, so I could intermix the boosters with that and really help that service. So here we're going to move on to um, strand testing. Uh, this is something that I think um, this is something that I think is really, really important in the salon and actually is probably one of the tests that are being talked about alongside skin testing um, quite a lot and how we're going to skin test. I mean, uh, sorry, strand test. I've always talked about strand testing um, as a strand testing for me would be a strand testing cutting. Um, and we've always said perhaps if it's a complex service, maybe it's a new service for a regular client or it's a complete new client. And if most importantly, if you're using any bleaching or lifting products. Um, the way that you can do these strand tests is to do them on or off the head. I prefer off the head so that you can keep a sample of hair. Um, by all accounts, I think a client has up to three years to put in a um, complaint about you. So it's really important that you keep your knowledge. And I know that when I keep my strand tests for big results, um, you can really see uh, how, what is happening and you can really stand up for yourself when you need to and you know you've done everything right because you can see it the most important thing is to be able to keep your strand tests we talk about keeping them with our color consultation sheets if you are an online bod and you don't like to keep um trees in your cupboard then i suggest that you get yourself a i know get yourself a little um box that you keep your remember those boxes that we had our record notes um in years ago so anyway we can still do that now as well if you don't have computer copies you can keep little hard copies and basically just keep that strand test um with the client's information in that so you've always got them um depending on your insurance companies mine have said that they want you to keep those strand tests for six years up to six years so it's really important that you keep them, you have a filing system and just deal with it. Anything you're going to do. 
and even for me, I'll, I'll be honest with you, sometimes I see them, they've done them, they've talked to the client about it, they've shown them the hair, and then all of a sudden it gets popped back behind the mirror and then I see them pop out again. And I'm like, where did, why is that not in the box? But it's normal. So just try and get your policies in place or your procedures in place. The most important part for me, because I've seen lots of questions asking about bleaching and when we should strand test and blah, blah, blah. Remember to ask yourself, what part am I bleaching? So if I've got a lovely set of highlights and I'm bleaching that, do I need to strand test her hair? She's a regular client. It's not a new service. It's my beautiful highlights that I love to do anyway. And I'm just going to highlight it. Why do I need to strand test that? She's already blonde, so she's already bleached to the ends. Remember to ask yourself, what part are you bleaching? I'm only bleaching the root. I don't overlap and I don't run it down, do I? I bleach the root to match the ends and then tone the root and then retone the ends, possibly. So there's no need to run that bleach through. So there's no need to do that strand test. Would I do a strand test on a new client for highlights that's got really damaged hair? Hell yes. Because I would say, I need to test your hair, see what it takes like with bleach. I don't like overlapping. I'm only going to be highlighting, but I really want to take a test cut in to see where your hair's at. So you start to see the difference. Um, bleach, as we know, is manufactured and it's manufactured for virgin hair. So when we need to lift hair that's previously coloured, it needs a test because every colour is different, every colour responds differently, everybody's hair responds differently. We have some clients that wash their hair once or twice a week that's curly. How will bleached hair react on curly hair? Will it stretch that curl out? You don't know until you do a strand test. So you can understand why I say to you, take a little cut in, do your test. But that doesn't mean that I have to take a cutting every time I do that. But if I'm doing a big change, if I'm doing some balayage work and I want to know how that's going to be, please make sure. So I didn't want you to feel um, manic about how, what are we doing with skin testing. If I'm looking at a client that's got an 8 or a 9 oh, short hair and she's my regular client, she says, well, I want a few little lights. Okay, well, we can do that. We can lift that. And we can use products that are very gentle or that lift without bleach as well. So think of your other options. We don't always have to bleach. The, the last with, yeah. The last paragraph, I think, absolutely <laughs> sets it yeah. in stone. So don't think about like think about your commercial decision here. Don't overthink it or overlap it. And if you do, you need to strand test it. And that is just it. And I hope that kind of puts that in a in a balance for you. And that went boom. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's have a look. So next one. Can I just um, answer just answer Gary's question really, really yeah. quickly? Um, Gary, um, all the information um, is on PH4 Pro. Um, website you can download or of course I love census.com you'll get all your technical information you can download and print off for that and it also gives you ingredients and everything and the best yeah. way to use them they've got step by step so it's really good um the best one I think <laughs> the incompatibility test I mean we did these all the time when we were training right when we we're at college then what happens it just kind of stopped no one did them so much. Yeah, there's we a can... mid-band age of stylists that are like, what's an incompatibility test? And what do I do? And how do I use it? Yeah. So for me, this is a test when you have absolutely no idea what's going on with your client's hair. Um, she's come in and you're doing consultations online and you know, I've been colouring my hair. I've done this. I've had this on my hair before. Clients are aware they need to be more honest with you. So once you start getting a list of things, you think, oh, my God. God, what on earth are they using on their hair? Or you don't, it's a different brand and you don't know much about that brand. So remember, like uh, now I've been using sensors for, you know, seven years and I'm obsessed with it. Um, yes, I used other brands before. Do I know what they do as much 
No, because in seven years, they've also grown. They've also got new products that I don't understand about. Um, and I don't know what everything contains. So this incompatibility test is really important. Um, it's a method of doing that. Make sure you're checking for an adverse reaction. It will be seen on the hair instantly. It will heat up, it will change, um, maybe change to an unexpected colour, or sometimes there's bubbling that's going on. You need to see all those things. Um, what can you do to neutralise this? Straight well, look, away. Look at what you've got underneath. The <laughs> other thing I was going to say with the um, crystal gel is getting yourself a clean canvas, removing anything that's on the hair so that you can see. You will be amazed if you guys have never used crystal gel. If you use crystal gel on the hair properly, you will suddenly see things in the hair that you didn't see beforehand. Um, and you can catch clients out in their little lies. Oh, no, I've yeah. not put the colour in my hair for seven it's, years. It's. Actually, yes. Do they lie? No, God, no. So, um, um, crystal gel will remove all of the minerals, all of the deposits, um, all of your current challenges that you have with hair are down to what's already on the hair for the most part. And crystal gel will solve this problem for you. Um, I'm going to just tell you some of the deposits that, that may cause some of the reactions in your incompatibility test. Do it. Um, and it all comes from the water where minerals like lock onto the outside of the hair, almost like little rocks and stop, stop the water and stop the product getting into the hair. Now, if it has calcium in the water, you will get white deposits. You know, like when you have white deposits on your nails, that's because there's a lot of calcium in the water. Hair will appear darker than it actually is because of the reflection from the calcium. You will find that you will have hidden highlights if you remove, you remove those residue with crystal gel, all of a sudden there might be some highlights in there that you didn't see beforehand. Magnesium in the water um, will give you just really, really dull hair. It won't shine. It will look very, very matte. Iron will give you, obviously, brassy tones. Think of rust. Anything that's got iron in it, it will start to reflect in a very, very warm, golden, coppery tone. Whereas on the other hand, copper in the water will give you green and khaki tones. Um, and that's, that's a huge problem for us as colorists. And then God forbid they still have lead piping or there's lead in their water. You will get, the color will take darker than you actually assume. And, and it may actually not happen on the day, but you might go in with a seven and then all of a sudden the client comes back and go, my hair's gone a bit dark and it comes in and it almost looks like a six. That would be because there is lead in the water and one you fix, full stop. That, you often see that um, sometimes darker banding around the hairline um, yes. and that's often because mineral makeup now is really popular. So if we can do that and try to remove that before we're colouring, that's a really good um, way to help stop those darker bands. Um, yeah. We use crystal gel a lot when we get an incompatibility test that's a negative test and we see these adverse um, reactions. And um, yes, we can actually use uh, um, SOS utilities because it's a um, stronger version of crystal gel, if you like. But for me, um, as a colorist, I really do watch what that's doing and maybe they might need two or even three crystal gel treatments and when you do an incompatibility test again you see um the response is fine so you don't get any weird coloring on the hair um so you'll do a test of any incompatibility test it comes back negative and you're like oh man i'm glad i didn't put color on that do a couple of crystal gel treatments you can talk to your client about it she can see she can see what's happened to the hair she can actually feel it if you're if a client is like, meh, 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 you can actually say, no, imagine this on your scalp, like that can't happen. Then they do the treatments. When you do another incompatibility test after you've done a couple of crystal gels, um, the test comes back and the hair is good to go for colouring. Every client's different. Sometimes you can do one and it's perfect. Sometimes we've had to do three or four of them because they've had a build up of things what they're using so it's really important that incompatibility test is really making a comeback and um, when do i use an incompatibility test 
when I don't know this client, when I really don't understand, when she's popped something on herself at home, she may be a regular client, she may have gone to Spain for her holidays for six, nine weeks, and she's put something on it out there, you have no idea, and you say, okay, before I colour your hair again, we need to do this test, because we don't know those products, so new clients, without foul, big colour work, without foul, clients that are cheeky when they that you're regulars but they do do strange things to themselves oh i thought i'd just pop a couple of highlights in and they get like a weird sunning thing and you're like why did you do that but incompatibility test so and here yet, we i was going to just say one of the wonderful things about when you're doing a crystal gel treatment as this wonderful um few pictures indicate when you when you pull off some of the crystal gel and it is a weird weird color the yeah. client is like oh my god wow was that in my hair absolutely it's so easy to get your client on board once they've had one of these they'll go and tell their friends because they see what this does it's an amazing thing yeah um, and i think sometimes we forget that's in our toolbox and sometimes we can think um you know do we do this before every color i've got some clients that love a crystal gel every time before every color they just love it because they're it's a treatment for their hair and it's having that whole process so they love it um they it's just part of their package other clients are every maybe six months that you should remind your client to do that so sometimes we get out of the habit as a stylist ourselves um and you can you know we're just reminding you of these little um, gems at Passion for Hair here. I'm All going right. to just answer Holly. Um, crystal treatment, um, crystal gel treatment takes 45 minutes under heat, Holly, and then you would finish it off with either Miracle Repair or your favourite balancing condition, conditioner. Mm -hmm. All right, so the next we're going to talk about just very lightly is protecting the client. Uh, for those of you that don't know, the new Shield Oil um, has now become all-in-one, all-encompassing, and I love it. Um, it's probably my favourite protection um, client. Uh, it's a protective skin and scalp lotion, and it's formulated to be applied before all colour services, especially bleaching. Thank you very much. Um, and when you've washed the bleach off, don't forget to apply it before you do your toners so that you keep that and it keeps the client's scalp really nice and steady. So it's really lovely. Um, it's brilliant for the types of my hair because it's really black and I just absorb color on my skin like you wouldn't believe. And this scalp oil, if you massage it in well, um, all around the edges, you don't get any residue, which is perfect. Um, and the whole idea is that we get no reddening of the scalp either with once this is on. Um, it shields from direct contact with any products and it also makes it much easier to wash off. If you've got those clients that have got no cuts or abrasions but they suffer perhaps with psoriasis, this oil is amazing to pop over the scalp and it stops the colour being absorbed by the dry skin. So really think about that. I absolutely love shield oil it's probably my favorite it's absolutely leap ahead of the <laughs> of the original one isn't it absolutely yes so okay. yep for you euphora color prep spray um this is amazing this product um can be used um as a scalp protector it will remove the free radicals and any irritation or possible irritants off of the scalp um, before you colour the hair and you would use it in exactly the same way as you would use a normal scalp oil. Spray through, gently work it through onto the scalp. The other wonderful, wonderful thing about this product is if you get that client that just wants to scratch the colour and, you know, well, it's a little bit sore there, Rich, or, you know, there's something happening there, you can go in with this product and spray directly onto that area and it will stop it instantly. It's a fabulous product. Um, it's also, as it says, it's amazing for any client that generally has that post-service irritation. You could spray this through, gently work it through to that client and then just allow it. It's almost like a detox for the scalp, 
prior to us detoxing with the wonderful Malibu detox. <laughs> All right, so as we're looking here, let's see if I can go on to the next slide. So um, one of the questions that always comes across, how can you revitalize, create low um, lifting levels without bleaching? How can you neutralize the negative incompatibility? We just said to you, here are some of the other products that really help us guide with that. So, of course, we've talked lots about crystal um, gel, but just in case you guys wanted some um, pictures and information, here it is. We have crystal gel Malibu makeover, so you can see how it arrives here, Rich, if you... Yeah, absolutely. One of the wonderful things, a way of um, delivering this information to a client is is um, just very, very simply saying to them, you know, we want to do as much as we possibly can non-chemically before we start to use our chemicals. And by doing a Malibu C makeover, revealing what's underneath, lifting out all of that residue, you may actually find that you don't need to lift some of the hair because this will do it for you and it doesn't need coloring to lift it will actually allow the any buildup any residue any medications any of those products that are tampering with the true reflection of the hair and then yeah. you can go in and just tone gently with a non-oxidating like toner fard is just incredible so instead of thinking I'm going to have to relighten stuff, why not use this first, see what happens, and then you could tone with your fard instead. And we're yeah. now using a service that's non-oxidative. Non, um, non so one of the things, actually, you just talking about that, Rich, I was thinking um, and sharing the pictures uh, we just said as well, Gary, um, you can have the before and afters. I mean, um, when you start chatting to people in the Passion for Hair um, stylist hotline lots of people have got some fantastic befores and afters with crystal gel and then I thought to myself oh I must say that and then it rem I reminded myself that before and after pictures are a very important part of our service as well so we talk about clients bringing pictures in for us but one of the most important things is after bleaching um, at different stages um, I had realized that we take pictures all the way along um, when we're creating a new balayage, how do we get there? What, where are we going? We're going from dark to light. What are our stages in between? And we always take pictures. I like to take a before picture so people remember what their hair looked like. And then as it is, especially when people say, oh, my hair's damaged or it's done da 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 And actually, you know that that may be overheating with tongs or something like that. And you've explained that your hair is more delicate and when you left everything was perfect intact how are you looking after your hair at home what are you doing to that yeah. so but thank you for the reminder gary because that was really good i and, I, and actually do you know what do you know what that's reminded me like you know even like previously over the years we have done color care letters to give the client that on headed paper on a lovely little card this is how we recommend that you look after your hair. And again, that shows due, due, diligence, due, 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 due diligence. Oh my God, I couldn't say that. And duty of care, doesn't it? You know, giving your client that, that whole plan on how to get the best out of your color, how to look after your hair, maintain. Of course, if they break, their, break those rules, then that, that's the emphasis is down on them, not, not you and what you did. And I think that's a, it's a really, really good way of doing that. I love the aftercare letter and maybe we could have something in um, the Passion for Hair Stylist Hotline group if we could think about something like that. Because <laughs> Thanks guys. Because um, the aftercare letter for me would be for those clients that have had real big changes um, and those clients that have had aftercare for bleaching um, is actually something you mentioned in that I'd like to adopt at Halo. I think we would benefit from that. Um, just being able to say, here is your aftercare after having your bleaching service or after um, going very, very blonde from dark. So how will they maintain that toner? And it gives them a little list of things because, you know, when you leave the dentist and you've had, I don't know, your teeth whitened or this or that, 
you get an aftercare, don't you? Don't drink tea, don't do that, da 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 da. And I was thinking when you were saying that, we wouldn't need to give that to every colour client, but surely that would be a great idea to give to people as they leave. Um, yeah. And, you know, we have, um, I know Carly talks about the consultation cards and on the back of that is the products you recommend. But actually, I think we should add something on about steps that they could do to look after their hair. Yeah, so, and share that on their um, social media and definitely on their website. You know, well, you should perhaps have a little project on your website. Yeah. Well, but, do you know what? The one thing that always strikes me with, with our industry is that clients go to um, they go to a, like a beauty therapist. You'll have a facial. So you'll spend 35 quid on a facial, but you'll spend 95 quid on the aftercare. Hairdressing, it's you spend 150 pounds on your color, and yet you begrudge spending 12 pounds on a conditioner aftercare. Yeah. And that's that's us. That's it's it's us that does that. We need to make sure we educate our clients. It's it's as important as your skin care. So yeah, so um, you talk about this one because you know my my favorite product is coming up next. Ah, right. <laughs> Actually, this is one of my favorite products. I think that this is one of the products that your, your client will notice immediately. And it's an alternate to color prepare, um, in my opinion. Um, and it's a, another version of a home version of crystal gel. Um, hard water is specifically designed to get rid of some of the water deposits and the free radicals that are in the water. So um, it's a fantastic product to send out with your client. Um, it's a fantastic product to send to your client. Thank you, Maria. Yes, it's amazing on the scalp. The same way as uh, the build-up and the products and the detox for, that beauticians recommend for your skin, this is for the scalp and the hair. Um, so I, I would really recommend you guys, if you and your, your team have not used one of these, uh, I would seriously recommend you guys try it yourself and see what difference it makes. The hair will suddenly become very, very much more flexible. Sorry? I'm going to try it. Please do. <laughs> and do you know what? The other thing, the one thing that really, really convinced um, Marie and I when we first started using this in the salon was actually clients with wonderful grey hair. And you can't believe the difference in the colour of someone who's got hair this beautiful color here look if someone has iron gray hair when they use this for some strange reason this cleanses and detoxes the hair better than anything else especially if they have hard water and just by talking to clients about water softeners in their house and going abroad get away get away get back to the product i saw it at you <laughs> Um, sorry, you know, we go abroad and everyone sort of says, you know, that amount of shampoo and I get a big bubble head of like lava. This is about water softness. And this is the sort of analogies that you can use with your client to get your client to see what you're trying to talk about and buy into the fact that they really do need to do something. So these retail around about five to six pounds. And if you have them on your retail, it's almost like that impulse buy. So when I'm at the supermarket trying to not buy a Cadbury's cream egg at the moment, because it's right by the till, you actually want these right by your till so that you can get your client go, oh, should I have one of those? And it's a really wonderful little impulse buy, six pounds, one treatment, the client will notice the, the difference amazingly. That's a great uh, idea. Maria has just said, like, she can use it on eczema on her on her leg. It, honestly, it's just a fabulous, fabulous product. So I'd just like to say, um, thank you. Oh, I'm really happy you're enjoying it, and I'm sorry you've got to go to another Zoom. If you do, we're probably going to be about another 20 minutes, I would say. Um, we'll try not to keep you much longer. Um, yes. But it is recorded, and I'm guessing, if I'm correct, uh, guys, Passion, it will be on our um, YouTube channel, I hope. So um, I'm sure someone will confirm that for me in a moment. Um, all right, so this is my delight, um, and it is, uh, yeah, this afternoon. Fantastic. Thanks, guys. Um, it is 
absolutely um, should be part of anyone's colour tools. It's a lightening oil. It's not a bleaching oil, but it is a lightening oil. I'm going to tell you just a couple of little things about how you can use that. Um, so the lightening oil needs to be mixed with peroxide, usually 20 volume or 30 volume. It's one to two. If you're using it alone with no bleach, you'll just get about one shade of movement or possibly two um, as a max on, on very, very um, fine hair. Uh, it's something that's great to get rid of bands. It's something that's really good to get rid of heavy, dense ends. It's great when you want to just say to your client, when your client says, I just want to go one level lighter. You could go half a shade lighter on the roots, put this through the ends and it will just take you up one level. And more often it helps to stay because it's only one level, you don't need much toning after it. Now, of course, you can use it with bleach and these are our levels that we recommend. You can do that softly or you could do that with a little more strength. Once you add bleaching, remember that it's related with the type of hair and the previously coloured hair that you've got. So I love lightening oil for doing lots of gentle changes um, and it's become my way of, you know, with little flashes of lights going through, most people would naturally go in with bleach. Um, I just use lightning oil and maybe just a tiny five grams or a sprinkling of bleach just to give it a gentle boost and it lifts just enough to be able to tone after. You don't always have to go in with bleach and 20 bowl in that coloured hair. You can just do it very, very gently. So it helps to remove any of those um, reaction um, reflections that you that you don't want band in little lightning um, it's just I absolutely love it um, and introducing people very gently to slightly lighter hair um, it's a great way when people say I've got a rat gray spot at the front I need to gradually go lighter you could start using lightning oil just to creep up just that little flash at the front which just will help to hide that um, regrowth so yeah um, it's my baby <laughs> Um, the other products we're going to talk about now um, are our um, rescue products, really. Um, and these are really about finding out more so about the history of the hair. Uh, this is really important for us. So, Rich, if you want to do a little brief summary of um, Malibu for the CPU. Yeah, sure. And um, I'll just and answer Zoe's, Zoe's question there. Um, I wouldn't use lightning oil to re try to remove crazy colour. We're just about to um, Tell give, you what you the, give you the good <laughs> stuff now. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Malibu C, we obviously have crystal gel, which would always be your first starting point to try and get a clean canvas and try and find out what the hell is going on with the hair. Um, once or to use... help with um, incompatibility tests, um, et cetera, et cetera. But remember, with crystal gel, to keep your cost in perspective with clients, if you're going to go in, if the incompatibility test comes back negative, get a crystal gel on it. When it's ready to go, um, if you have a client that has a great incompatibility test, no problem, but they want to go lighter, you don't have to crystal gel. You can go straight in with your... Um, removers or your reducers I like to say we've really got to change the name I don't want them yes. to be called removers anymore <laughs> okay so from a Malibu C point of view uh, we have CPR which is your permanent color remover it would have been better as PCR but obviously CPR we all know CPR uh, CPR is a oxidating color remover. So you wouldn't use that either for crazy color or any direct color. Um, let's remind ourselves that it is, as Jude said, it's a reducer. It's, you don't use this to lift the hair. It will only lift the hair to the base that the, the original peroxide lifted it to. So CPR is our permanent color remover. Uh, we can overlay this, and we also have colour disruptor that can be used prior to that. Oh, you sneaky throwing that yeah. in. Yeah, I did, I did, I did. 
Um, and then we have DDL, which is our direct dye lifter. Um, yes, it is, Zoe. Um, you mix it with water. Um, DDL is can be mixed with water to remove the cooler tones of any direct dye. So blues, greens, light pastels. Um, if you mix DDL with um, an oxidator, it will unfortunately lift the natural hair as well. So it will have a slight bleaching action. So, so DDL will lift natural hair, CPR won't lift natural hair. Um, every time we use these products, we must use Undo Goo, which is fabulous, um, which will allow to draw the, the product and draw the pigment out of the hair. It's almost a necessity, I would say, that you use Undo Goo three times after CPR, after DDL, and after Crystal Gel. So, vegan-free, cruelty-free, all yours, boss. Oh, thanks. Um, I'm going to say, uh, just quickly there, you can see, um, you forgot to mention Quick Fix. And actually, that's a real instant fix, isn't it? I know. It is. Um, it is. It is. <laughs> and it's right there in front of me. Um, okay. Tell them about Quick Fix. Um, quick <laughs> Fix is... Um, <laughs> Quick fix is one of those things that you need just in case it's an oops moment. Um, you know, like when you looked at, a, looked at a base nine and you mixed it up and actually it was a six upside down or the color is just grabbed a little bit and you need to be using quick fix within 48 hours of any little oops. If you get a client who loves that color, she goes home and her husband says, I don't like that. And then she phones you up and says, colour's a bit darker than I expected. And yet she was happy on the day. If you can get her back in within 48 hours, Quick Fix is a fantastic product. Straight on, straight off, almost at the basin, and it will lift some of that unwanted tone out of the hair. Yeah. Uh, if the client leaves it longer than 48 hours, then you won't be able to remove it. And then you'll need to go in a little bit heavier handed with the CPR or one of the products that Jude would inform you of next. <laughs> so um, here we have um, SOS Utilities. So is our crystal colour remover. Um, one of the things um, that I would say the most, uh, we have lots of information about crystal colour remover. So if you haven't used it, um, as with um, CPR, um, crystal colour remover, they both are bleach free, but they are not a lifting um, service. Uh, for me, how I use, how I think about this product is why I keep saying it needs to be called a reducer and not a remover because it doesn't remove all the um, colour, but it reduces some of that colour that's in the hair. And it will give you a behind the scenes and a history without your clients having to keep secrets. So, for example, when I know that I need to do a balayage, I'm going to work crystal colour remover through first because I know I remember that she's got some highlights through but she went dark for a little while and I forgot where they are now and how much they've grown out I need to do this because it will allow me to then choose what bleach what um, service will I do balayage will I do foilage will I do total wear work I can't decide that because I'm not sure where those bleached areas are so this will give me that history for the hair and then I can go straight in with doing what I need to do first or next um, the other thing is is to think about is all to do with the peroxide that's been used on the hair before so when when you see you've used crystal color remover for example and the hair comes up really bandy is because maybe she was high lift tint for a while then she went down to like a 10 10 o with 40 volume then she went dark for a while um, and you'll see banding and that's because the peroxide hasn't lifted the melanin underneath and this is what this will expose usually maybe three levels lighter the exposure will be if you've used a 40 volume or a 30 volume for someone like me i use um my lovely 1.11 with either 10 vol or by the looks of things now I might have to go a little bit more uh, permanent because 10 vol is a bit soft to grow out I feel there's too much 
roots. So um, I don't have any lift of my undertone. There's none at all. So now um, when I use, if I wanted to go red, my first port of call would be a couple of crystal color removers. All I know, I have to have total faith. There will be no lightness, but it works inside the hair. It helps to reduce the color molecules, separate them so that they're easier to lift and bleach afterwards. When you use bleach after crystal color remover, it is beautiful. So um, I think, yeah, it's probably one of my favorites. Um, it, will also, it will also <laughs> help with your um, peroxide choice, of course. So if Absolutely. you were contemplating using 30, if you've used SOS Utilities, the colour will lift so much quicker. So you can then like bring no, your, your volume of peroxide down um, and therefore you're maintaining the integrity of the hair in a much better way. So here we have Changer. Um, and again, as um, Rich was saying earlier, this is for our direct colour removers. So anything that's got no oxidation purposes, so bang colours, fards, anything like that. As soon as you need to remove a toner that you mix developer with, um, you need to use SOS utilities. But if it's a toner that is bright fashion and we know that it's crazy colour or just our direct bangs, this is what change is all about. One thing that's important to remember is that it does have a fluid. And if you use it with fluid, again, with the cool colours, you've got no lift to natural hair. If you mix it with 10 volume, as soon as you apply that to natural hair, it acts like a lifter. So then it starts lifting natural hair. So you need to be aware of that and how you use it. Any more information on these? We've got some really fantastic um, uh, webinars that we've done about um, removers and things like that. But don't forget, um, you know, if you need salon training, speak to us at Passion because we can definitely enforce that and really encourage that for you so that you use these in the best ways possible. I really don't bleach anymore without using SOS Utilities first. It's very, very rare that I will start any colour correction without that. Um, it's just a first port of call and clients get used to what your protocols are and that is one of mine. So um, our next one here is just a really light one. Uh, this is for bleaching, but gentle bleaching. Um, so I'll let you guys have a little look at that. These slides will be there, so you'll be able to pick them up. But it just gives you a real quick way of the type of development that you can use. So look here where it says light and two to three color hair tones. Generally, when we want to just do a couple of little light pieces, most people go in with their peroxides with 20 or 30 volume and really lift that up and probably too much. But actually, we don't need to do that. Cosmetic Fix will give you two to three levels of lift slowly whilst maybe the rest of your colour is taking. So think about how we go about these. Um, and then the last one there just says about cleansing wash this is probably our perfect mixture for a cleansing wash at the basin if we needed to more more often cleansing wash you would probably think about doing something like what rich said earlier quick fix so um i hope that these got these slides help um i know zoe's asked the question here to remove electric blue crazy color would you use ddl or changer either you can use both and it, whichever you prefer um, if you're asking me I'm of course going to be using changer um, but depending on what your salon has inside the salon um, you can use either for those um, all right we wanted to cover a couple of things that we said was just as important of lifting is stopping the process um, this for us is just as important as it can continue to lift and oxidize for up to three days after bleaching wave goodbye to those long lasting toners so this is a thing of the past um this is your little love rich and um, voila we have deox um i don't think there should be a salon anywhere at all that doesn't use deox after any chemical service um deox will stop oxidization instantly um 
and it also in like it's, it's amazing for the scalp as well so even if you know that the client doesn't need it from a, an oxidizing of the, of the color point of view um which they obviously do we all know bleach that will continue to work for up to three days after we've finished applying it on the hair and rinsed it off and i saw on um instagram the other day someone was damping down their highlights with a water spray and dry wiping it so that you didn't have to take your client to the basin and i just really honestly i was like i'm gonna type i'm gonna type um deox is that perfect solution if you do have to remove foils from the back which you shouldn't do because if we're using our correct volume of peroxide and our correct choice of bleach we may well be able to leave all of our foils in right to the very end and they all miraculously take at the same time but if the hair is lifting very very quickly and you want to take some of them off having your deox when you dry wipe out of your foils and deox it will stop the oxidization of that that pre-lightener very very quickly i.e instantly um, we would use this at the basin after all chemical surfaces one to deox the hair stop the oxidization working two to deox the scalp and make sure please people it's like you tell your clients what you're doing this is an add-on that you're doing this is this is a, a usp that no one else has and you so want to make sure your in, client in go. your creative add-on do you remember Absolutely. we said at the very beginning, we talked about all of those little cheeky products, um, how do we do that? And we want to extend um, the highlighting service, maybe forehead of highlights, and we want to be able to have that add-on service. Um, this, that would be one of those products that would be in there for me because it's yeah. one of those that I naturally want to do. Um, but how do I put that in my price thing? Well, it's really easy to do that now because that's what we're doing. Um, yeah, I'm loving that. We've got a, we've got an add-on package for um, some correction package for highlighting whatever we need to do. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll think of a different name, but I'll keep you guys posted of what we put in there and how. That's I, really, I really like that one so far. Just as you've come up with it, can I just say that make sure that when you're you have your your trainees, your assistants working at the backwash that they know what this is, they know what it's for, and they tell the client, make this a USP, make market this, make yourselves better than everyone else in the town. Absolutely. So um, going on from this deox um, to uh, Mixable Plus is what we use at um, Census, and our Mixable Balm is the second part. Um, I know that before you shampoo your colour off, we rinse it completely and the most important part is um uh to be able to put the balm on before we're shampooing so that we stop any oxidization now um we talk about using deox or mixable plus with bleach um services but i really really love it when a client says i love being red but my color fades all the time start introducing mixable plus or we have nectar now that is really great for helping to hold on to those. But also to be able to use deox or something like that afterwards really helps to prevent colour fading um, for those real bright colours, the reds and the coppers. So don't just think that it's a bleaching service. It doesn't have to be. Let's think about how we can use it there too. Um, Let's do what we love and lots of it. So the last few um, slides that we're going to cover now um, are really, really important to me as a colour maniac. Um, first of all, I wanted to talk to you about temperature. Um, I know, Rich, you had something to say about temperature because with Malibu C products, we use a lot of heat. Yeah, absolutely. Um... CPR and um, crystal gel need heat and um, crystal gel is a 45 minute under heat treatment if you really want it to do its job properly. Yeah. Uh, CPR I would I would watch but again it must it must use heat. You do not use heat with DDL. No. Um, it and has a lifting quality to it. Yeah and also we don't recommend with any of our color lines that we use heat with um 
with our services so um, if you're uh, you just develop without heat. Now it's really important when you're thinking about bleaching the hair for example that any if your temperature in the salon is below 22, 23 degrees um, you're going to slow down that bleaching service and you're not going to get a good enough lift on the hair. This is a really important factor to remember um, because in the summer months when we're lifting we want to make sure that they're not placed by um, air conditioning units, we think about not pip popping outside for a, a little cigarello um, or anything like that or sit, to sit in the sunshine. You have to keep them at a consistent temperature. So these parts are really, really important and um, about following manufacturers instructions with this um, particular idea because again when you're looking at these things don't don't use a climber zone to speed up the color if it's not recommended um, to one of the most important things I realized with color and wherever you see me I'm going to be talking about this is product application um, and how much product to apply so you can see the lower the volume the least amount of product. The higher the volume, the more amount of product that you need. This is a really important factor when you're thinking about using, so for example, when your client, you want a little bit of extra lift and your census app has told you that you can use 40 volume with your 9.3 and that's what you should be using. Also to get that clean lift, to get that gorgeous gold um, color, you need to think about the amount of product that's going on to the hair, how much it needs to be saturated, not overlapped, but the thickness layer that you that you apply to that hair. The higher levels of peroxide, the longer it's got to oxidize. So this is why the color's got to develop over 55 minutes. So we need a thicker layer so the air doesn't get in and oxidize it quickly and you don't get too much lift. We want that thick layer so that it oxidizes slowly in that 55 minute development time and that's how you achieve that. With 10 volume, it's not on the hair for too long, 25 minutes. So the oxidation process of that is gonna be very, very quick. So we don't need a thick layer. The air can get to it and it oxidizes and that is quickness. So think about the amount of products that's to be applied to the hair, not overlapped, but the amount of lift. This also leads me on, sorry, Rich, I'm blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. To, can I um, just say the last slide is going to be incredibly important once we come out of lockdown because of what's gone on and the, the length of the regrowths as well. So. Yeah. So, and that's where we're at now. So let's have a look at this slide here. You can see um, the bleaching service of what we needed to achieve here. Um, this is also for colouring, not just for bleaching. We know how to do a large application of regrowth on bleach. If you don't, please follow, um, or if you're unsure, please ask me some um, questions at a, a later date with that. But I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about reverse colouring which means making sure that you get the band first. So often when we bleach hair like this, we will do that mid band, you know, the band in the middle to the previously colored hair. We wouldn't apply it to the roots. Now, of course, if we're coloring hair, we need to make sure that we get all the color all the way to the roots because it needs that whole 45 or 55 minutes development on all of it. However, when we color, say a regrowth like that, we apply the color normally with a tint brush and go down to the previously colored hair. Great product application and amount on the roots, but as we get nearer the color that's already colored hair, this little area here doesn't have so much product. So my idea is to reverse color so that you would take your product and you would color from previously colored hair up halfway, take more color, go from the roots down. Then you have the same amount either side that squidges into the middle you see and you get a perfect amount of application and perfect covering and you will not get a band. It's really important that you do that. Anything that's much longer, so we're now looking at sort of four, five inches, you're going to need to do the mid band to the regret, the mid band to the previously coloured hair first and do that everywhere. Leave that to develop for 20 minutes. 
remix up a new product whilst you're waiting, start at the area that you started first, you won't have to wait 20 minutes on its own, then apply it to the roots and then overlap onto where, where the colour starts again. So you'll overlap onto that mid band that you coloured. Does that make sense? Because otherwise, if it's really big, you won't get an even coverage. And towards that, um, you'll end up getting a band. Use a higher peroxide on the mid band. Um, I wouldn't suggest using a higher peroxide on the mid band if you want um, um, the same colour, depending on if you've got grey hair, how much grey hair um, that you've got in between. So do the development first with that, then apply it and overlap it onto the mid band part that you'll have and you'll get a really good colour and it will be matched perfectly because then you time your 45 minutes, say if it's 30 volume and it will be on so that you'll get a good lift. So hopefully that's given you some info um, with here. Um, this product this um, part for me is um, just making sure that you're really important I really like to reverse color because I don't overlap on my previously colored hair so this shows you how making sure that your color lasts as long if you keep overlapping you'll create your own bands by having too much um, depth on the hair or if you're using um, different products in the mid band and overlapping you're going to create hot spots of sensitivity so it's really important that we're really careful on what we use and also um porosity as well will have a massive impact Absolutely. so keep an eye on your port like your porosity levels of clients when you are thinking you're gonna um have some overlap or you're getting banding it may well be the porosity of the hair is causing the pigment to get into the hair like further than it really needed to. All right, so a few of the things that um, I absolutely love if you guys know me, um, if you want to clarify how much lift you get, this is the, sh this is the um, slide. Here are your volumes down the side. Um, years ago, we were taught that 20 volt would lift two shades. We actually know now that it really doesn't if you are a darker base. So if you're a darker base from one to five, it really is only going to give you one level of lift. If you're really light naturally and you've got fine hair, of course, you're going to get that two levels of lift. So for me, this uh, peroxide action is where it's all at. And your sensors app will really help to support that. I know that we have some great little extra tools that maybe Rich, you might like to discuss. No, not really. Oh, go on, go on, then. go on. Then. Okay, so here we have um, some color choices with our color concentrates from Malibu C. Um, the wonderful thing about this is you do not need to skin test for these either. But what we also have is the color mask, which is our carrier. Um, we have red, blue, and yellow, and you can intermix all of these to get a specific personalized color for your client. And then we can have that in our mask so that the client has a bespoke color service that she can take away and maintain her color. Um, and they have a wonderful little grid up there. And you'll find these on the malibusc.com uh, website. Um, the product information you can also find on um, ph 4 Hair Pro uh, website. All of the technical sheets are on there as well. Um, this is a fabulous way of also keeping up with the color um, if you're going for vibrancy and you want your client, your client wants to keep it going in a shampoo or a conditioner form. Great. Um, thanks, Rich. So the last few slides that we've got, um, if you guys are a little unsure about how to recover the tones and what we were just talking about recolouring, here is a great little slide that just takes some notes here for you. As I say, they'll be up. Um, how much levels lighter are they? How long should it be on the ends for? What should I be doing there? This is a great way to say, okay, what do I need to achieve? Um, and how do I need to do that? And don't forget with only loss of reflection or loss of reflection and half a tone, we do have the fantastic bards that will um, resolve that problem for you and give you that change of depth 
um, by that half tone and just push the tone back in. So it's really, um, think about the bigger scale of what you can do. If a client wants to be a shade darker, but you can't do that because um, change of medication, those things, it doesn't fit in with those screening questions, you could do her same colour. Um, you could take the colour through so it refreshes and then you could overlay with a fard and you could overlay with the chocolate fard which is really deep um, or the um, yeah so you could overlay and you could leave that on for a good 20-25 minutes and it will give her probably an extra shade maybe even a shade and a half depth tell you what that's good for because in the summer she's going to go I want to go lighter again but it's so easy to remove so you can do all that, meet your expectations for the client um, and still be able to hit your targets as a salon owner or stylist because you're still fitting in with that. You're then retailing the fard because you can say to her, why don't you do this at home? Just remember to wear gloves. And then you can keep that and maintain that colour without having to do any changes. If you really enjoy this colour and it works for you, then we can make sure we do your skin test and then we can make sure um, that we get you booked in to go darker. But it's a great way to start doing. Of course, if you've got two levels of lighter lift, your fard is not enough on its own. You have to recolor and then you can overlay. But if you've got loss of reflection, you could just straight in with fard or use it as an overlay system. I hope you are good with that because that's probably one of my um favorites with that um also as well just wanted to show you this one very very quickly um we talk about how um fard helps in between times so if you've lifted hair and she's come to you and she's got yellow white yellow white yellow you know how that kind of works sometimes um, on those areas that are really white and you've lifted the roots and you've got them to a nice clean pale yellow but you can still see she's got some areas that are really sensitized before you tone use gold fard on all those little white areas and you can literally just pinch them through the hair with a little fard dab that on where you need it and massage it a couple of minutes rinse it and then you can apply your toner and you will get a really even result Whereas often on those really sensitized areas, um, you'll get like a gray area or it'll be a bit pinky or a bit violety because it's very, very sensitized. But if you just even out that yellowness to start with, and I would do that before a platinum dawn. So I'd do the yellow where I need it, as in gold. Then I'd platinum dawn and clean everything up. Then I would apply my grays or my silvers or anything like that. So I just wanted to show you where FARD really fits into that and really helps you out. Yeah, and this also comes into your corrective care package as well, doesn't it? Absolutely, completely. Because all of those little tipsy things that you're doing that are like, oh, well, I'm just going to do that. Where does the price fit in for that? Uh, I know that I've got some fantastic stylists that work for me and they will be doing that because I drive them crazy about it. But then I think to myself at the end, You've opened a new tube of gold fard. Where is the price for that? How is that going to be factored in? So as a salon owner, I have a kind of different head to a stylist. So that way, that little corrective package we talked about, we've just got to find and decide what that package cost would be. Maybe it's a £40 corrective package on top of their highlights because there'll be lots of things that you need to do. And there'll only be little dots of colour that you might need and that will fit in with that package nicely and I think what we also need to take into consideration is it's not it's not just the product price is it you're paying for that person's experience for their knowledge something that they won't get absolutely anywhere else no but again I, I keep banging on about it but <laughs> tell the client what you're doing and why Build it up, make yourself, ele elevate yourself, stand up and be, be counted as the professional that you are. And this is why we're charging for what we're doing, because you won't get this anywhere else. No. Um, I think that the last slides that we're going to 
talk about just very, very lightly, because I know you guys have been amazing and been on here for like a couple of hours already. Two hours 14. <laughs> so I wanted to um, share with you these ones because this has become more and more obvious uh, to what's happening um, at the moment and how people are doing that. We do have, um, hopefully there'll be classes to come, um, but we do have um, passion for hair classes for fading to grey and how we can make this transition possible. With all our amazing tools that Richard and I have discussed today, um, we can um, get there um, for your client. And if you want some more information, please catch up with us. Please talk to us at Passion um, because we can. Uh, help guide you um, and I would say for the thing that Richard and I love probably the most I say for both of us is the passion for hair hotline I know that people will put up images like these and these are some of your favorite aren't they Rich yeah uh, images like this, this blonde flash in the front is going to be massive coming in this summer so um, we can start achieving those, like what we spoke about earlier with lightning oil. We can start achieving small changes and being able to have um, yourself, not hair magazines as such anymore, but maybe start to look at what's currently going on in the trends. Keep up to date with yourself on the trends and maybe um, on a, um, your iPad or maybe on your phone, you've got, on mine, I've got hair trends. Um, for the years and I just put a few things that are really happening now and when clients so you know when when you have that I can say yeah I do do you mean like this because I'm on the case of where our trends are going I'm instantly thinking how can I achieve that with what products I already know my blonde in front of me um, with the blonde at the front it's got to be a bleached piece for sure she looks like she would be a 612 on the rest of it with that lovely new shade from Senses. and I'm probably going to end up toning that with like a 10.0 and 10.2 through that front because I love how neutral the blonde is it's not too ash it's not too yellow um, and it's not too gold so I can already start to think where these products start because I'm there, what are my new shades? What colors will fit with what pictures? So I'm hoping that these um, will give you some um, ideas. <laughs> when, I, when I do the graduate course, I, I bang on constantly about consultation and photographs and, and having a Pinterest board and all of those things prepped ready so you can just flick through the photographs to get exactly what your client has this image of her head of that that perfect blonde you mean yeah. this one or do you mean this one do you mean this one and and then they'll go yeah that's the one and then it, then your diagnostic brain goes in and says exactly what you've just done with that photograph you you you, you analyze it and you work out exactly what you can use perfect I'm done. <laughs> and this is totally how you would put everything into perspective, Richard, wouldn't you? Oh, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> a little yes. bit weird. <laughs> it's definitely going to be challenging. Who are you calling weird? <laughs> definitely myself. All right. So, guys, that is us. And we are done. <laughs> we are. Um, and thank you for sticking with us for two hours and 41 minutes and 59 seconds. I know, we had so much to think. <laughs> I think we might. Um, we did have a lot to go through, but I am I was really happy. I was really excited to do this presentation for you guys today. Yeah. Thank you for the Richard and Judy show. <laughs> Maybe a book to follow. Oh, yes. Book club. <laughs> All right, lovely. Uh, thanks, guys. You've been brilliant. I hope to see you all very, very soon as well. I can't wait for us to all actually get back and um, be in each other's company. Um, yes. I've really missed all our gatherings. So I hope you guys... Fingers crossed, well. April the 12th. Yeah. Great. Thanks, guys. See you all soon. Bye.